The whole bottle? The whole bottle. <laughs> I was at a strip club once for my 19th birthday. It's called Pleasers. It was a trailer on the side of the road. Ooh, <laughs> that's hard. They Did saw, they have poles in this trailer? They, the poles? Yeah. Bro, they had a pole. They had an oil pit. They had a, a shower, but like a shower that you would see in your house. It was like in the corner, like two glass, and then the, the door opens. So I guess after the oil wrestling, they would go shower off. Well, this girl, bro, she... First trick is like she puts her legs behind her head and it starts popping dollar bills off of her privates. Like, <laughs> like oh, it's fucking amazing, right? And then the next thing is like a, gall, a ping pong ball comes out. I'm like, she's not going to do what I think she is with this ping pong ball. Bro, she's troubleshooting sure with her enough, pussy. I start fucking like just playing. Yo, cool you going against her? Yeah, so then for her grand finale, she takes a Zephyr Hills water bottle just like this and empties the entire thing into herself. And pulls like a free willy and just <laughs> splash zones it all over us. Bro. <laughs> I would have chugged that water. Dude, it was literally the best night of my That's life. That's sick. Yeah, sick uh, is hard. an understatement. Fuck. How big is this trailer? Yeah, uh, a double wide. Say. Definitely a double wide. Like, how many people do you think it can comfortably fit? Um, I don't know. 13, 14. 13? No, it, it, honestly, it was like. Um, Mary Poppins' purse. Because on the outside, it was like, this is the small, this is tiny. Yeah. When you go inside, and you walk, and it's like a wonderland of disgustingness. <laughs> you know? That's hot. It was fucking cool, dude. And then she was doing buy two, get one free head in the back room. <laughs> and it was my birthday. And the girl who, like, treated us all, shout out Claire. That, dude, this is fucking 19, what's this? Almost 20 years ago, 17 years ago. Um, she's like, all right, I got us all head. You guys go first. So she paid for me and my homeboy, and then she was the freebie. So oh. she went into the back, and the girl went down on her last. <laughs> I have a question about that. So obviously you split it between three people. But could you have done it where you go till you nut, and then you get two more? Yeah, but I mean. Because like that could have counted. But could you imagine how hard that would be for that poor young woman? Because after my I mean, first... I'm just trying to take advantage of the deal. Well, I'm just saying, because <laughs> after my first release, like, we're going to go in a good two hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I get exhausted. It's like, I don't have... I Maybe it's because I'm older, you know? I'm 36. It's like, once my first release is out, like... and that's You don't got nice time for anything else. It, like, I just... It's going to take me forever to drum up some more. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. That's why I trained myself to always nut quick. <laughs> so like I'm like boom. I think I nut. Out? No, bro. Women fucking women? highlight that shit. Okay, bro. <laughs> women got shit to do too, bro. We don't gotta be fucking all day. No, but you know what they would rather do than the shit they have to do? Uh come. Yeah, come and get your shit. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> come and get your shit. <laughs> Dude. I last an anime intro and that's Scott's it. Scott's is going to wreak havoc. Over no, no, no. Here. He's good. He's good. He's not even there. Is that air purifier? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Gangster. Sometimes it'll be some background. Did you not feel how clear noise. that air was? I did. Yeah, you want a piece of No, paper? I'm okay. I'm allergic <laughs> to vegan. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm tripping. Well, I got to say thanks for having me on, guys. 100%. This no is problem, one of the everyone. most comfortable I've felt between two men in my entire life. I'm glad we could do that for you. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm lying. It's yeah. a little bit un unnerving. <laughs> no, no, no. It's easy. It's good. Yeah, yeah welcome you, to the dude. Beta Boys podcast. Thank you. This is sick, man. What's your name, dog? My name is Blake. Rothmel, um, and this is fucking awesome. I had Nick on our podcast at Hakuna, live from Hakuna, a couple months ago. Um, and that was fantastic. Yeah, well, you're a fucking really smart dude, man. And it was like, it was really cool to, we have, um, we look at things from, I think, a very similar perspective, but like on paper, I would say that I'm like, you know, like conservative, which is new for me too. And then I would imagine you're a little bit more leaning left, but all of your perspectives on the things that I think about are just like on point, you know? And I just feel like more people need to hear, you know, the, the angle that you're coming from. Um, yeah. Nick argues like someone that's angry, but what, like they have like a literature degree. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they went to school for four years to learn big words. Well, well, it's important that. to, like, you know... Um, <laughs> I mean, student debt is student debt, dog. And I got it. <laughs> but I think Biden just said he wiped it all out. And it was the, the Supreme Court. Well, not the Supreme Court. An appeals court decided to block it, so now they're trying it again. What? Yeah, no, no, no. It was Why? a nice thought, though. I thought I was almost done with my student loans there for a second, but it, we're it's back. <laughs> How much more do you have? Uh, 17. Bro, you had 17,000 since I met you. 
don't well, think you COVID's paid. been going. Well, I mean, don't get me wrong. I I think it's bullshit in general, student loans. So I've deferred it, did payment. Like I, I've done as much as I can to not pay it, honestly, because I felt like the day was gonna come. And um, and I met came. you ten years ago, dog. I think you had less student loans then. Isn't it because well, all the payments you're making just go to the interest, right? Yeah. At first. At first. So, like, student loan interest is higher than you think. So, because of that, it's like it's like paying a car loan, basically. So, it's not – except you can do much more flexible, like, income repayment plans because it goes longer. I have a for real question. But it's bullshit. What are they going to do if you don't pay? Take your degree away? So, actually, one of the schools I went to was sued successfully for, like, ripping people off. Like, they were, like, you know, fucking with people. The one by Walmart? Yeah, that yeah. one, South University. <laughs> so, because of that, I entered oh, the lawsuit. No, 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 you're good. Um, I entered the lawsuit, and now my student loans, regardless, are deferred till 2026 until they settle it. So now, don't I mean... Um, Wait, you're in the lawsuit? It's your yeah. school was sued. One of one fifty, one uh, one of one hundred and like fifty schools were sued for like they would they would sell students on programs that weren't going to exist basically. So with me, right, I was in school for physical therapy, and they said we're going to build a bridge program where you can become a physical therapy assistant, and then we'll have the bridge program to bring you over. But it would cost like a hundred thousand dollars in total by the time it's done. What in it's a three fucking racket in three quarters? I was at fifteen thousand dollars in debt, and I. Well, no, I was at two quarters. I quit after the second quarter. But in the second quarter, I asked. I was like, so what's up with the bridge program? I want to join it. I want to make sure it's good because they said it was going to be live in the next six months. The person I was speaking to who was the head of the department, another person I was speaking to was like, oh, we have no idea what you're talking about. And at that point, I was like, this is bullshit. This entire school is bullshit. So I dropped right out of that and got a biz. Like I finished up because I had like 150 credits. I just got a business degree from PBSC and called it a day. Damn. I feel like that it's such a conundrum, right? Because you're in high school. You're killing it in high school. You you, you feel like... It. But everybody's going to tell you, like, you need to accept these loans for a college or you're going to be a loser, right? So you, the A is Pretty like, much. bring on all this fucking debt to, to prove that you're smart, you can read books. I think the biggest thing is to prove that you'll follow through with something you commit yourself to, which I can understand and respect. Or... Yeah fucking be looked at as a loser and i feel like it's also strange like you know they paint out people in trades like whether mm -hmm. you're a plumber or you you know there's these phrases about ditch diggers or whatever like dude i know plumbers who make over a hundred thousand i was about yeah, to say dog, there's people think... there's people i know in trades that make way more than a dude that's working as a teacher in school yes. bro if it <laughs> like, pays like, the way, bills way it more. pays the bills you think i'm a loser for not going to college suck my dick yeah like I what agree. the fuck from the back when i'm fucking tired <laughs> like bro i'm over here you can do whatever you want in this life you can you can do whatever you want i'm making this clothing shit look how beautiful dude this by the shit. way i just saw this beautiful. and like off before i knew shit, it was dog. yours i like it like caught my eye and yeah. i was gonna ask what's up with off the shit <laughs> And I was like, it's bro, dope. It's oh, dope. Yeah, three no. months ago, I had no idea how to do clothing. Yeah. And it's so easy. You can just do shit. If it pays the bills, it pays the fucking bills. I don't care if you're fucking sucking the fucking dead crust off someone's foot can for 100000 a year. If you can, bro, you can uh, sell feed pigs. there's a I, will, there's a way. There's, yeah, dog, bro. <laughs> there's no I, look, my toes are painted, and I shaved them, and I was selling feet pigs while I was at my job, bro. You're I was not making, being like, serious. Bro, I, Nick, tell him. Madam Bigfoot on Feet Finder, bro. I'm not kidding. You can look that shit up. I it, made $400 in a month. Before. Are we able to show videos on here? He it's wrong. not videos. It's just like pictures. Uh, if, if you can show them to us and I can plug them into the video. Okay, so I have this friend. Um, I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, you're good, But dog. it's right on par with what we're talking about here. Her name is Anna D. I've known her for fucking 15 years. Um, she started off as like, she was a go-go dancer. And she started like putting groups of girls together and mm -hmm. then booking them as go-go dancers at clubs. <laughs> so I help her put together her initial branding. She was the Chaotic Cupcakes and put together her first <laughs> business cards for her. Hard. Bro, she owns f five online businesses. One of them's like Blades for Babes. Um, one, It's like bongs and dildos on the internet. <laughs> and she thinks she, thinks she went oh, to college dude. for that shit. She's a millionaire, And bro. you think she went to college for that She's shit? She's a millionaire. Absolutely not. Sick. Dude, let me see. Her name on Instagram is Miss Mothership. Uh, shout out Miss Mothership. You guys need to check this young woman out. Um, so I'm going to go to her page. She's got 86,000 followers. They did a one minute thing. The first weird thing I sold. She sells her ear cheese. What? Really? Yeah, this is one of my closest friends. 
She sells her farts and burps. I sell things from my body to my fans. She's a fucking millionaire, dude. Yeah, she didn't go to college. If it pays the fucking bills, who cares, bro? Um, bro, shot. it doesn't matter. <laughs> They're this all fool, playing dude, you. This fool's over here, like, They're, looking yeah. her up oh, online. He's like, I want some of those parts. Yeah. You have I'm 17 grand own. What do you in debt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get that 17 grand and buy a bag Yo, of her fucking farts. Yeah, can you turn fuck? this thing on and let show me let how start selling my farts, please? Yes, dog. <laughs> easy. It's easy, bro. That's so wild that we're in a situation in like reality where people think you have to go to college. Yeah. You know what's crazy? All, why are all these successful motherfuckers not going to college? You wanna know why? In those four years that you're spending money and wasting time, honestly, if you're being a doctor and shit like that, you're not wasting time. But they're trial and erroring that shit. Yeah. Like, of oh, yeah. course, if you don't go to fucking college, and like you work at like a shitty job or whatever, like some jobs like that. Yeah, that's whatever. You know, like do whatever you gotta do. But if you're if you have a fucking goal and you're just yeah. crushing it and you're up every day and you're like, I can't wait to fucking kill this shit. Yes. Then you got this, dog. Oh, you know, the other thing is is about like the shitty jobs. Like shout out to every shitty job I ever had. Yeah. I had a thousand of them, and my dad always told me every job you have, you're gonna learn something that you're exactly. gonna take to your next job and to your next job. So every place I worked, whether it was a clothing store or a lawn care company or a moving company or cell phone repair i could go on and on i was a student of business in each one of those jobs exactly i paid attention to what they did for marketing how they did their sales their customer service and now my wife and i own our own business and everything that i learned along the way we use as tools in what we're doing now so yeah dead-end jobs are not always just dead-end jobs right they're a, a, a training ground mm -hmm. like you said not only that but you come out of college you go to get a job and they're like we need somebody with experience yeah oh yeah and they fuck you over how the fuck am i supposed to get experience yeah if somebody's not willing to give me experience? you about to experience and these then, hands dog <laughs> the and then that's another thing though you can get a certification like you, know, you can get a trade certification or like for instance like a real estate agent just because i know the industry you can get a real estate certification in literally 30 days and make more money than you ever could as a teacher or anything else. That's a great point. With like yeah. a fraction of the time put in. That's and it's like, point. but that's that's a type of job that it works on the amount of work that you put into it. Exactly. You get yeah. what I'm saying? You have to be a self-starter. And sometimes people thrive in structure, so it's challenging. Like you get that real estate um, certification or whatever, and then now what? Like you have to be the type of person who's willing to hold yourself accountable, mm -hmm. get up and show up. You know, but sometimes it takes 10 years of falling on your face to realize how important it is to get up and show up. Yeah, but I'm even a testament to that, even yeah. if you're falling on your face, so you're still even if you're like mo going through the motions, but you're still trying, you're still making enough money for like, yeah, to get through it. Yeah. You know, and, and I would also say to what uh, Blake was saying is you falling on your face for 10 years is going to pr like show you a lesson that you'll never forget for the next 30. Yeah, you exactly. I mean? Yeah, it's true. There was this guy that uh, I saw once. You remember you talked to him. He um he was like, when I worked at a bar, he came up to me and I started talking. And I was like, yo, you look like you got oh, some cool, uh, cool stories, dog. And he looked at me and goes, you ready for this shit? And he worked in a gas station and he saw a guy with a nice ass car. And he went up to him and he goes, yo, bro, how'd you get that car? And the guy was like, don't ask me questions like that and left. And he was like. I need to get on his level. Like, what the fuck? So what he did First is... First of all, that guy sounds like a fucking yeah, dick. Yeah, fuck that guy. 100%. But um, <laughs> he, what that guy did is he bought websites. This is when, like, the WWW shit was coming out. Yeah. And he bought... Remember the guy I was talking about? And, like, he bought a bunch of websites and then sold them. And he made $3 million. Yeah. And then he was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. He fucking went to McDonald's and he worked for them as a manager for six months and didn't ask for any pay. And he wanted to learn, like, how everything works. So then he opened a spot in Port St. Lucie. He bought a bunch of land, and he made, like, a Popeye's. And then he did that, and then his Popeye started fucking crushing it. So then he worked for a liquor store for, like, six months. Didn't learn it, like, didn't get paid. And then he opened a liquor store. And then by then he was like, now I have all this shit. Yeah. I have all this income. And then he, like, opened a, um, he opened a fucking... Uh, car wash and remember he looked at me he made me like give a five star rating for his liquor store yeah, no, you don't. I was like bro I ain't doing that shit and he goes please and I was like alright I got you so this is your homeboy who saw the guy in the nice no, car but yeah, like, started doing this I literally met him at a bar like I was bartending and then he just sat yeah, down no, he was a guest like a random person that yeah and I was like dog you got cool stories I feel it Yeah. and he just told me that shit and he goes yeah bro and he goes I've given some money he goes I've bought a bunch of property and he was like I just did all this shit with the money and he goes the most I've learned 
was shit that I've done for free. But I, he goes, I went in, and he only wasted, what, like, a year of his life, but, like, six months working at McDonald's, and then six months working at the, uh, the fucking, the liquor whatever, store. yeah, the liquor store, and he just, he learned so much in those six months. He learned how to run businesses. Yeah, so it wasn't a waste. He didn't work for free. Yeah. He was gaining knowledge, experience, know-how, mm-hmm. you know. And le- shout th- that's a great point to some younger people who might be listening. Yeah. Like, bro, okay, so side backtrack. When I was in my 20s, I was, I was sure I was going to be an international superstar in any day now, right? So I never wanted to get a fucking job because I'm like, I can't fucking be reliable to go to work because one, I'm going to get a record deal any day now. Two, tonight, I'm going to write the best song I've ever written. So I put on Facebook, what would you do if you saw me working at McDonald's? Like my thought was if somebody saw me working at McDonald's, they'd be like, Shh, I guess the rap game didn't work out. And some close friends commented and said, I would say that guy's willing to do whatever it takes to make his dreams come true, Damn. you know? And it was like eye-opening for me. It still took me another fucking 10 years to to realize that you got to fucking work your ass off. If you have dreams, right? You can't say, I'm going to pursue my dreams, fuck a job. You got to go get a job, get two jobs, get three jobs. Use those to fund your dreams because it takes money, you know, mm-hmm. and people will be willing to pay you for your time. Um, so th- if anybody's listening and they work at McDonald's or they're thinking about getting a job at McDonald's, dude, put your pride and your ego to the side and go get that fucking job. Yeah. You know, but also I feel like people overstress jobs a lot, too. But the craziest thing fucking zoom in on me right now, bro. When, <laughs> when people fucking view jobs, I'm about to change everyone's perspective. You need to view your job that you're working, that you're getting paid for, that you don't give a fuck about as a hobby. And in the dream that you have and the shit you want to do, view that as your job. So p- people, when I see, oh, like let's say like you want to do music, it's so easy to put music to the side because you're like, I could do it any time. Right. Oh, but I have to work, so I have to do that. If you fucking switch that shit in your mind and you're like, music's my job, I have to do that, that's how I'm getting paid, and like this work shit's my hobby, you're still going to go because you already have that structure for it. But it takes so much stress off that work. You never really get like fucking... um into it all the way like bro there's people that talk about problems at my job now and i'm like la 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 i'm so oblivious to everything that's happening because i go there i crush it and then i leave and that's it that's all i want to do and like mainly like jobs like respect that like just do what you gotta do but then when i come home i'm like this is what i have to do so i can work like eight to ten hours a day but when i get back like how many times i get back first thing i do bah i'm on ipad making music i'm doing all this shit so it's just it's so easy once you think of it like that because then you're like, this is the job I have to do. Yeah, like don't get yourself buried in all of this shit at work. It like, don't know matter. that it's a means to an end. Yeah. You know, the other side of that, though, is I got to say as a business owner, staffing is one of our biggest challenges because it feels like there might be a cat war going on out there. No, they're good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it feels Fight like <laughs> TikTok is telling the youth of our world that I've seen it. Don't give 40 hours of your life to somebody else who's going to replace you as soon as you die. First of all, if you work for me and you die, it would be devastating and terrible. But I do have to fill that spot. It's not because I don't think that you're special. Two, like it's not a bad thing to be an asset to your company, right? Mm -hmm. I do agree that you should build your dreams. But if you've made a commitment to a place that you work, like – like you said, show up and crush it, right? You can do both. You can show up and yeah. crush it and handle your shit at home. Like sometimes people have this mentality of, fuck, I don't want to fucking work for these people. It's like, dude, I, as a business owner, I'm trying to create opportunities for people. I'm not mm-hmm. asking you to do anything that I won't do myself. But sometimes it's a challenge because I feel like people don't want to work, you know? And I'm not a huge corporation. I'm not fucking, you know, taking advantage of anybody. But as a business owner, we're looking for people who want to show up and crush it. And we said it in our team meeting the other day. Like, if you have dreams outside of here, like, we'll support them in every way possible. Like, say you want to open your own kava bar. They, they were kind of, like, dumbfounded. I said this. I'm like, we'll back that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we just need, while you're here and working with us, to be focused, dedicated to what we're doing. And then we'll help you build your dreams and do, in your off time, you know? Let me ask, do they still crush it, like... Do you think your staff crushes it? So shout out to our team. Everybody does a fantastic job. I think sometimes it's hard to leave your personal shit at the door. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what we've realized as business owners is we're very hands off with our staff. We like 
you guys fucking do a great job, that's it. But then our staff sometimes may end up feeling like, you know, a man without an island or, you know, if that's the right phrase. Like they show up, they work. We, we need to work on more doing like team meetings, team building to remind everybody that they're not just punching in and punching out. Yeah. But our team does kill it and we're very, very grateful for them. But we've had some people come and go that it's like, they feel like they're doing us a favor by showing up. And it's like, this is supposed to be a mutually beneficial relationship, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really important. But don't forget to build your fucking dreams too, you know? Yeah, I feel like your situation's a bit different just because you are the type of boss that would, number one, you bartend yourself at yeah. that place. Yeah. <clears throat> and like, you do all the same work as them. Yeah. So that makes you a lot different than like, let's say like, uh, like a GM of like a restaurant or something like that, where it's like, a lot of them are really good. A lot of them are also like really bad. Yeah, you know agreed. what I mean. Where it's just like they will not do mm. all the jobs that they tell someone else to do. Yeah, and, and I think who... that's where the disconnect comes in. I agree. And these, there's people in positions of power who are in those positions just because they want to be in a position of power, right? And they belittle people, and they're not willing to do what they're asking somebody else to do. We've all had jobs like yeah. that, and it fucking sucks. So I agree with that, and I appreciate what you're saying. My wife and I, we lost a we. Opened a boutique fitness facility 2019 in March. 2019 or March 2020, global pandemic forced our gym to close. We ah. weren't ready to take no for an answer. So we pivoted and we started building out a kava bar in the middle of a global pandemic. We slept on an air mattress inside the kava bar for the first four months so that we could work every shift and build the culture. We were sleeping on an air mattress in there. We've been open a year and a half just a few months ago because one of our staff, we had to part ways with them and we needed to close and then open. Like, you're right. We're dedicated. We're going to show up and do the job whether somebody else would do it or not. But we also need to be able to grow. And to be able to grow, we need, you know, dedicated team members. Yeah. And it seems like in it's, we're in a day and age where that sometimes is a challenge because young people, like, they're being told Fuck a job, follow your dreams. I just think there's a happy medium there, right? Where you can leverage the time that we're willing to pay you, mm -hmm. do a great job, and then take that money to build your dreams. I think yeah. that there's a happy medium, you know? Yeah. Well, like, as much as, like, it kind of sucks, though, not everyone's dream might come true. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Because, mm. like, I, I strongly believe you can do whatever the fuck you want in this world. I also strongly believe this shit might not even be real. We might be in assimilation or some shit. <laughs> we are but, Yeah, I 100% believe that shit. I agree. But, like... I think that, like, there's just, like, the fucking bees, bro. They're supposed to be worker bees. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. And it's like, what would everybody do? If everybody followed their dreams, well, you couldn't get a sandwich at McDonald's. No, nah, because that's not yeah. true. What if someone's dream is, like, to make a sandwich? That's true, but you there'd be me? a lot less McDonald's I don't know, bro. Bro, my friend was telling me today, <laughs> he's literally, like, he found his passion, and it's cooking. And I'm like, oh, all right, yeah. bro, like, sick, that's, that's right. your dream. Where I like to tell people who's, like, kind of in a weird spot or, like, when they're in school and everything, I was like, all right, let's, let's fucking cut it out real quick. Let's just say the world reset. You're at the age you are right now. And let's say they look at you and they're like, yo, every single job pays the same. Every job pays $100,000 a year starting. And I'm, I'm next to you, and I'm like, yo. You could pick whatever job you want. You get first pick. Every job pays the same. What would you pick? You're asking me now? Yeah, I mean, it feels like that, yeah. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> dude, you're putting me on the spot here. I think my, the, my honest answer would to get paid to make music. Yeah, and Nick, what would you do? I'd be a politician. All right, well, he's you're corrupt. Uh, so, man. yeah. So, fucking, bro, but whatever you answered, go at full... Speed. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. We need politicians and we need like people to make music. Yeah. And it's just like everything. My friend said that and he goes, Yo, I would honestly like work at a restaurant in like New York City, like some fine dining shit. I was like, Well, bitch, I'm hungry. Get to it. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? So No, it's a great point. It's a yeah. great point. It's like you, you gotta follow your dreams. There's something that you're passionate about. But the other thing is is also what you're saying is some people don't know what their dreams are. Exactly. Like I used to, when I was pursuing music heavily, I'd be out of the bar and have conversations with people and always be like, oh, what do you do? And they tell me some, you know, job they're working. And then I'd say, well, what do you love to do? And all the time people are like, oh, I don't really know. I feel, and that's yeah, like, yeah. that's sad. But there are, you're right. There's some people who don't know what their dream is. Yeah. Does, and you know? I mean, I feel like we live in like a society <clears throat> that completely revolves around individualism. 
but at the same time, it's almost bred the opposite effect where people don't even get the chance to know themselves to begin with. Mm. No, I don't think that's true. I in think a lot it, of ways. But if you get off your phone and you just be by yourself, like I feel like it's super easy. Well, that's that's kind of what I mean. I feel like it's like just the way everything's built. It's like you're always looking to like post pictures or do whatever and like put your stuff out in the world. But at the same time, it's like you don't know how to disconnect. But how often do you, how often do you post pictures on Instagram? Never. Exactly. So it's just it's what you make of it. You get what I'm saying? Someone how like how old are you? Twenty eight. How old are you? Twenty nine. So I'm thirty six. We're at a little bit older in you know this whole social media shit and whatnot. The kids ten years behind us, they don't know what it's like to not post their lunch on Instagram. Well, no, they don't know what it's like to sit grew, down and have a conversation like this. Well, we they grew up in that up. shit. Like yeah, we grew up, in, up in the social media shit. Like yeah. we were at the age, dog. I was like fucking fifteen when like Facebook was made. So yeah. we did. We did grow up in like the very beginning where it's like we started with MySpace. Yeah, and worked our way. Bro, up my MySpace page up. was lit, popping, dog. <laughs> my Poppin'. MySpace page was lit. I had like dollar signs raining down and shit. Hell yeah. My top eight were like fucking. God, I wonder who was in my top eight. Nobody ever really wanted to be there. But yeah, MySpace was lit. Yeah. But then, <laughs> but how old were you when that shit came out? Um, I remember MySpace coming out. What, 19? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Dog, I was still getting breastfed when that shit came out. I was getting breastfed too. <laughs> but it wasn't by my mother, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Me um, either. <laughs> but yeah, so like we like kind of grew up with that, but I feel like we're just in a like, thing. So like someone hit me up today. And they're like, yo, you ever seen the show like Breaking Bad or everything? And I'm like, I don't watch TV, bro. Stop talking to me. Mm. Man, I don't give a fuck. That shit has nothing to do with me. Yeah. You know? So like when like they say this, like you could say it's, it's affecting it. But it's just if people focus on their own shit, certain things aren't going to affect them. You know what I'm saying? It might have a little bit to do like when it like hits all society. But certain problems you have, like people aren't being afraid to talk or people are afraid to have conversations like this. Yeah, I can. I have younger people that work in my job and I just go fuck with them. And like they feel that like if you're pure shit, they drop their guard. and It's easier to get through that. Yeah. You know, it's sad, though, because I've seen the youth like not know how to have a conversation, right? They're so used to communicating in 128 characters or less. Yeah. And they come into social settings and they clam up. You know, and it's something that I take great pride in is if I see a young person who's not really, you know, doesn't have that confidence, like I'm going to spend some time with them yeah. to encourage them to be like, listen, first of all, we're all uncomfortable in new situations. So, you know, some mm -hmm. of us are less than others, you know? But it's like, it's okay to look like an idiot. It's okay to feel awkward. Just like, be yourself, you yeah. know? And I love to see people, like, kind of blossom out of that. Exactly. You know? I like when people are on their phones like this, and they look down, and I always go up to them, I'm like, posture up, pussy! <laughs> and I like, every time, bro, and they're like, and I'm like, fucking go like this. And they're like, what? Dude, that's like an actual... Um, physical ailment that's happening like people are growing this extra hump on the back of their neck oh, from yeah, looking yeah, down at their cell phones all the time you know yeah no i like to put little pieces of gum there <laughs> to see if they notice that shit so fucked. <laughs> bro it's whatever like all that shit i don't know bro like i'm so like focused on all like my own shit and it might be selfish and it might be like tunnel vision whatever the fuck you want to call it, but i don't care about that yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. and the people i hang out with don't care about that yeah. you know so like if you're watching that like Look in the mirror, like, bro, breathe. Breathe. All you have to do. Mm. <sighs> I just did it for you. So, like, my <laughs> friend's like, yeah, I'll be on my phone. I'll do this. Like, I listen to fucking music on YouTube or whatever. But it's okay. Like, I can go without my phone. Like, I like going into, like, public places. If I have to go to the supermarket or some shit, I'll leave my phone in my car. And I'm like, ah. And, like, you know how people always do those little lame fucking supermarket voices? Like, they'll walk past you barely and they'll be like, sorry. I'll be like, yo, it's okay. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm like, stop with the fucking little voice. But I don't know, bro. It's just, it, I feel like what you focus on is going to bring it out to you. Yeah, like, right. we had a meeting at my job today, and so many people were bringing up shit. Like, bringing up little things that, like, they had problems with. And I was like, y'all are tripping because I never see this. Like, I was like, I just, you know, I'm not that invested in it. Like, I do a good job, and they're like, yo, great. And I go home, but anything else is just... Whatever, so it's just what you focus on. But then, if, like, the shirt comes in, and God forbid, the H is off, I'm pissed. Right. I'm, like, obsessing about it, right. so. Well, you know, I think what the po one point is that the way you're dedicated to what you love and you have a dream, and we all have something, passion projects and whatnot, like you said before, some people don't. 
And I think it shows with like the small portion of people who are extremely successful is because it, there is a large percentage of the population that are completely okay with mediocrity. But what do you view as successful? Oh, that's a great question. And I'll probably answer this in a very, you know, materialistic, terrible way. But, you know, I want to get to a point where, you know, I can make decisions in my life where I, money is not the head of that decision, right? If there's something that we want to do or somewhere we want to go or something we want to get, we don't have to think about, well, are we going to have enough money for this? That would be the baseline for success yeah. is fuck you money, right? Where you can just do live your life as how you want. And mm -hmm. then, you know, I would never want to be there in misery like you know i feel very successful right now because i'm in a happy healthy relationship with my wife yeah. we're pursuing our dreams together you know but i also would measure my success with you know money in the bank you know because it money doesn't fix all problems but it makes problems easy it dog. fucking helps <laughs> yeah you know i don't i just i kind of i feel like money's like bullshit like I feel like if you don't think about it, like, I don't worry about it. Like, of course I have bills. Of course I have shit I have to pay. But I just, I'm always, like, I'm so confident that it's going to come. Mm. It doesn't bother me. Like, being successful is, like, so, like, I made the clothing shit for, like, a reason. We don't have to talk about it now. But when, um, I, my end goal is, like, like, I saw a guy and he was, like, homeless. And I always try to, like, help homeless people. Like, I'll buy them shit or everything. You know, like, Same. not trying to fly. Yeah. But when I, like, there was a guy and I have, like, all my inventories in my car. So, like, there was this guy, and he's like, you got any money? And I was like, dog, I don't. I was like, I have nothing. And I was like, and I'm a little broke boy right now. And I was like, but I have these socks. And I gave it to him, and I was like, read what it says. He was off the shit, and he loved it. And just, like, that fulfillment that it gave him and, like, that, like, joy that he had, I'm like, this is, like, this amounts to, like, so many more riches because it's just, like, that, to me, is successful. Like, that felt better. Like, I've made decent money, like, with this clothing already. Like, I'm already, like, uh, positive in profit. But... It's just that going in felt so much better, like that I was able to do that. To help somebody. Else. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I I agree completely. Like, and that's why we're we own a kava bar, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not that we're just selling tea and kava. Like for us, it's about making positive impacts on people's lives daily, yeah. right? And I go back to that mutually beneficial relationship. We create a space where people feel comfortable, they can thrive. Yeah, you said you'd help people work on their dreams. To be a, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But we're also able to make money while we do that, which exactly. is win-win. But where I do have an issue, and it happened to me the other day. So there's one guy um, who is always on the exit at 95 and Okeechobee, right? He's an older guy. He he. I know what the workplace market is like for older people right now. He looked like he may have some sort of injury. And he's always got a great disposition, and it's his thing. So when I see him, if I got 10 bucks, my wife gets frustrated. She's like, you know, you can just give 10. 10 bucks. I've given 10 and 20. A 10? You know, I give 10. If I got 20 bucks left, so I've done it before where I give 10, you know, because because of that feeling of how good it feels. Dog, I gave someone know? a sack of Jawea coin and I was like, yo, you spoiled, bro. <laughs> but what the, the problem fuck? is, is that I was leave, walking into CVS the other day and there's this guy who's in his like late 30s. He's got like painter's clothes on and he's standing behind the corner hiding from the front door and the cameras. And he's like, yo, yo, you got a few dollars? So, sorry, bud, I don't. And then I'm on the way back out and he's asking somebody else. And I, it's three in the afternoon on a Monday. And I said, you know how many places are hiring right now, bro? And people might think I'm an asshole for this. He's like, bro, I've tried them all. Bro, I'm at the corner of fucking Okeechobee and fucking, there's literally 5,000 businesses around. I said, you could be there now. You know, the problem is, is people have gotten to the point where I fucking work 100 hours a week. Yeah. Why? Because you feel like you can't, should it be our responsibility for you to eat? I understand money is in everything, but it costs money to eat, dude. It costs money to live. And there's people who will pay you for your time and your efforts. So I, I don't know. Some people, it's like past their time, whatever. Older guys having troubles in a wheelchair. I'd love to help. Abled body man standing outside CVS on a weekday. Like, bro, why am I going to pay for your lunch? I feel you. I just feel like there could be a deeper outline to that story. That's true. And we don't know it. So I, I'm saying you don't have to pay for their lunch. But as much as taxes as we pay... There should be something that can help people in those situations and they can possibly do background checks, see how much they're making and everything and see if they're actually like in need of it and then help them in that situation. Yeah, if I agree. It's, that's why like I try so hard to buy them like fucking food every time I see homeless people because – you don't – not knowing where your next meal is going to come from is a very scary thing. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, 
if you don't know how that actually feels, you can't really think about it, yeah. you know? So it's like, if you could say like, you, you might have helped him and like pushed him in that situation and did it, but you don't know if like when he goes to these job interviews, he hasn't eaten in two days. Right. Doesn't he's have a place to take a shower. Yeah. He's a anno- bro. You're annoyed when you like have nothing to eat. Yeah. You're like you're in fire flight mode because you're like, when is this gonna happen? Right. You get what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, yeah, it sucks, but imagine having actually like actual no help. Right. In that situation, and I'm not saying that's anyone's responsibility, but it's just like at the end of the day, maybe kind of, you know, you don't know them, but. Guide them in certain places. Be like, I know this place is hiring. I know this place is hiring. Like, you know, and like, you don't know them, but just taking a little bit of time. Like, that's like with the socks or shit like that. A little bit goes a long way. And I know you like you help the other guy and everything, but we never know like like what somebody's story is, what yeah, they've gone through, and just, whatnot. Bro, how, I think that's fair. I thought it's about it today because I drove from I dropped my friend off in Boynton and I drove back here, so it's like a 30, 35 minute drive, and I saw I saw like eight nine homeless people on the way, and I'm like, what? mentally has to like something has to break in your body like there's people like obviously like there's scammers and shit like that but who aren't homeless or who don't need it but what has to break in your body for the normal person that goes through that to like get to that point to just give up well i mean like so there's i don't know if this is like a legitimate like premise or theory or whatever but there's um there's some people i follow that speak about homelessness in general and for instance, they live in California, where it's way more prevalent. Oh, it's than horrible here, in right? California. But so there's levels to it, right? There's a bunch of homeless people that aren't actually living on the streets. They're living in their cars, they're couch surfing and all that, but they're mm-hmm. technically homeless. But because they're already in such a precarious situation, that they actually are like they're one bad moment away from like being on the street the next right. day, right? So like in that situation, your life becomes that much harder because it's like you said, right? Where am I going to eat next, right? You might be able to just barely figure that out but now the next question is where am i going to shower next where yeah. am i going to do this and when you hit that point now it's like when you go into a job you can't even get the job anymore because it's like you're dirty and it's not because you're not willing to work hard it's because you don't even have a place to shower well the so best then it's like it eliminates you from the job market and then the levels of homelessness that come after that are like the mental illnesses that develop from that situation because Mm -hmm. you can only live in a fight or flight mode like that for so long before it leads to other ramifications yeah so then by the time you're you see the person that's always on the road that person is number one much he's he's most likely going to die way younger than he would have he has mental illness that would take years now to rehabilitate and then on top of that you know a lot of homeless people that are by that time at that point like the amount of violence they go through, especially in like California, right? Or like around here in like certain areas, the amount of violence, drugs, rape that happens, like the co- uh, coping me- mechanisms are kicking in where it's like you just don't want to feel this pain anymore. This, yeah. this, this. You want to be numbed out. Yeah. So it's like there's levels to it, but most homeless people are like, they're like stage one homeless where they're like living in a car. Yeah. They can't, they're trying to figure out where to shower, how to clean their clothes for work and everything else. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where it really begins. So it's like that guy, I mean, I'm not saying that was his situation. Yeah. Maybe I was like, a dick in that moment and was well, no, having a bad I mean, day. But I always want to help people. Yeah. You know? No, exactly. Sure. Like I get your point of view. Cause like I, there's sometimes where I like, you know, everyone has th- a thought that comes to mind sometimes where it's just like, like what what happened like what's wrong like why aren't you doing this but then it's like you hear some like you know more so like a third person perspective from like a person that studies it or whatever else and it's like it kind of makes sense if they can't get a shower and then all of a sudden it's like their job fires them because they're dirty when they're just not able to afford rent with this job yeah Mm -hmm. Um, and this is like a compound of so many different issues right in that that our country it's almost like incalculable and then what a huge problem we have where you talk about homelessness in california right and we're thinking god Taxpayer dollars just need to go to help that. And then you do a little bit of research and you realize that it's actually like a billion dollars allocated each year in the state of California to fix homelessness. And there's like 50 people on payroll that are making $200,000 a year to help fix homelessness. Like what the fuck? But if they fix homelessness, they're out of a job. Right. So the, that's another huge problem in our country is like the bureaucraticness, if that's even a word. Is that, oh, a, yeah, no. is that is. a job or do they get elected for that? No. It, so the oh, way that question. works, it's a job. But and it's exactly what he said. They need to keep that job. 
Yeah. And they pay themselves a lot of money because they it's like a slush fund. So they, they get allocated a billion bucks and then that's their thing, right? But because it's not like mandated by like a streamlined federal government service. Yeah. Because it's not just like a mandated like public housing units that are gonna take all these people off the streets, almost like the projects in New York. That started because people but there were dog, so many people not no one, living bro, in places. No one wants to live in the projects. Well, bro. of course, but I'm saying if you're homeless and like you set up the like the projects now are bad. The projects when they were first built were built for working class people. Right. I mean, like back 70, 80 years ago, yeah. How long do you think that like my grandparents used to live in the projects and Yeah, New but York. how long do you think it was good for? I mean, like again, that's where like it, things fall apart. Like I'm not saying it was even good to begin with. But at the same time, it's like you eliminate the first factor of where can I shower today? Yeah, but I mean, what a lot of homeless people do, like we had a friend, remember he moved to Colorado and he didn't have a spot to stay. But yeah. the first thing he did is he got like a bullshit like gym membership. Gym right. membership is T- the go to. Yeah. Ten dollars a month. Ten dollars a month. Shower. You can shower every day. And then I know a lot of people. Not a, I've seen because I have a storage unit at public storage. There's people who are living on the homeless. Yeah, yeah. And they, they get there. themselves a storage unit for 150 bucks a month, and it's a place to keep their things, lay their head down and stuff. Yeah. Um. You know, the, it's not ideal. No. But you you have at least you have a place to stay. And you have a place to shower, and you're at 160 a month. And a huge differentiator is n- not doing what I said to that guy, but it's like when people feel like they have nothing to live for, they give up, right? So we've had a few people come through our establishment who, have, who are down on their luck and are having some challenges with drugs and whatnot. And my thought is if we can be a place where this guy, one, feels safe, two, can charge his laptop or whatever, and then get some encouragement, feel like he's got somebody in his corner – then maybe that's the little bit of push that he needs when he goes to make, because life is about a collection of choices. Every day you get to make choices and your life becomes what your choices are, right? So when he's making the choice of, all right, I got 20 bucks. Am I going to go get myself some food or am I going to go get myself some dope? Maybe he'll think, fuck, Blake, I I don't want to let Blake down or whatever. You know, so I guess the the other side of what I'm saying is if you do come across somebody who's on come across hard times like encouragement a listening ear um them knowing that they have something to live for can make all the difference in the world 100 Mm percent. you know but there was one time all right there's actually two things that happened like so (laughs) the thing is um i told nick before i don't judge people how they act when they're in their comfort zones i don't fuck how you act that's how you are i judge them how they act in uncomfortable situations you get what i'm saying so like that's i feel like that's who you truly are but fuck that this story is more important we don't have to be deep for a second there was one time i went in pollo tropical dog <laughs> dog i went to pollo tropical it's 1 p.m i was in line for 40 minutes i'm like i'm about to bust down i was so hungry and i drive that must be the one on okeechobee it's the one on okeechobee <laughs> i already know i go boop boop i'm on my way and i see a homeless guy and i was like yo so i make a u-turn i'm like you hungry he goes yeah i pop a yui it's we're at the red light i'm here he's here i haven't even touched his food yet maybe i took a handful of rice i look at him i was like yo i haven't eaten this here i feel like spongebob when he gives the golden spatula and i'm like here you go dog my head's down and everything he takes it opens it up he gets so excited he stares me in the eyes and this man said no drink i said the light turned green i stared at him i was like bro no house i was like fuck you dog what the fuck i was so mad this happened to me in downtown orlando one night me and my buddy got pizza we had like three slices left in a to-go box we're walking by a homelessness. This was 2010. Homelessness in downtown Orlando was very bad fucking 13 years ago. We walk by a homeless guy. We're like, hey, man, you want some pizza? He goes, is it a whole pizza? We're like, no. He's like, no, I'm good. What? Yeah, but like, I'm, I'm not- I, don't know, I didn't want anything in return from that guy. But that no drink, I was like. Fuck you, dog. There's a level of entitlement, and, you know, I'm a big fan of Rogan, and you can take that however you want, but one of the things he talks about is everybody wants equality of outcome, but people don't think about equality of effort, right? And like I said, life is, sometimes people get dealt a shitty hand. Most people get dealt a shitty hand, but life is a, a total sum of the choices that you make each day. And some people are too far gone, but like, bro, make good choices. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, my brother overdosed in 2016. War hero, 
Bronze Star recipient, 10 years in the Army, two terms in Baghdad. Army diagnosed him with narcolepsy, put him on liquid GHB to go to sleep and Adderall to stay awake, right? This is a fucking, he was a never a party animal, nothing. He ends up on seriously hard drugs, gets busted out of the military, and is now homeless in El Paso, Texas. He's stealing from Walmart. He has a Bronze Star from the fucking from the U.S. Um, government, yeah. right? Um, but he's, for whatever reason, and there's many that are there, that he's strung out on the streets. He gets into a rehab center. He's in Florida. My father fucking pulls up to one of those intersections getting off the highway, and there's his fucking war hero son on the side of the road begging for help. And my brother had all the opportunity in the world. So I guess what I'm getting at here is that anybody is possible to end up in that circumstance you know yeah. so i want to make sure people understand i am compassionate for for terrible circumstances but like sometimes something just clicks in you where it's like bro i'm going to go get some money i'm going to pay and handle today but i'm going to take that 10 dollars to get myself a gym membership right i'm going to shower i'm going to make a plan of action and utilize some sort of government services or something to create some forward trajectory the problem is when you keep taking handouts you're stuck there forever you know and it's like are we just gonna do we just have to accept that there's a portion of our population a growing portion of our population that is always going to be stuck taking handouts or is there something that can do for people to be able to pull themselves out of it you know if we just keep there's some people who will just take and just be like, I'll make my 50 bucks a day asking for money. And there's other people who are like, I'm in a bad circumstance right now. I'm going to take that $50 and I'm going to figure out how to how to push forward. Is it or is it like a dead end or can people pull themselves out of it? You know? Yeah. I mean, you know, personally, I think the way I would think it should be structured is you you put the government services in place to build the momentum under them. And like mm -hmm. essentially create a floor that's higher than what it is now. Yeah. So it's like, okay, you go on bad times, your business falls apart, like the fucking a genocide or not. What is it called? Uh, the pandemic happens. And all of a sudden it's like, damn, I'm, I'm fucked. Yeah. I think there should be programs in place where they, they provide housing, they provide reeducation into trades or whatever else to get you back on your feet this way. And again, it would be paid for by the government. But then after that, you're no you're no longer on the government dime, but now you're a productive member of society. Right. But and and at the same time, it's like okay, now you you know you're a licensed plumber or whatever else. You can make your 70, 80 grand a year, and like I think because we spend a trillion dollars on war a year, if we cut half of that out, it would only take a tiny portion of that half in order to create programs like that. It would only cost forty billion dollars to eradicate homelessness in the U.S. to begin with. Yeah, but how many of the people who are homeless are going to say, okay, I'm going to get out of this? You know, how many of the people who ended up homeless were because they didn't have the effort? And over a long period of time, they just weren't willing to show up and show out. You yeah. know, and how do you weed through that? You know, how do you find the people who are willing to take that assistance and turn it into greatness? Because those people exist, right? But how, what's the percentage of people who are just like, actually, the weather in Florida is really nice, and I don't mind sleeping outside. But, like, with that shit being said, though, and you mean, like, people still help out. So, like, what what do you think the average salary for a teacher is? Oh, let's it's say, terrible. Let's 35, say, right? Nah, a little more. Like, let's just say 50. I want, I want to say they rose it to around 45, but even still, like, they're also paying for their own kids' supplies and shit. Yeah, so, it's terrible. So, 45 grand a year. Yeah. What do you think average rent is for one? Oh, I oh, mean, I can tell you, 15, around 1600. here, yeah, yeah, at least 15, 16. Bro, by by the bar over there, there's a one bedroom for 24. Yeah, yeah 2400. We're in a warehouse district, and they built these new condos, 2400 dollars a month for a one bedroom. So yeah, I can get, I know what you're saying. That's so psychotic. like, bro, half half of what a teacher is making is going to rent for a one one. Yeah. So oh, let's yeah. say after their rent. They're making seven hundred a month. Yeah. What's health insurance? Good health insurance is like three hundred. Right. You have four hundred dollars left. What's a car payment? Three hundred. Yeah. Then you have a hundred dollars for like groceries for the month. That's not gas and everything. Right. So you're literally doing all this. You're working. You have to have a degree to be a teacher. You're doing all that shit to break even. Yeah. Barely. Barely. I mean, barely. Yeah. You know, the, you guys kind of already know where I stand on it, but it's like again, like just like there should be a government service, like and obviously there's much smarter people that would be able to build the program. I'm gonna disrobe. But like, no, no, you good. Um, 
But when it comes to like health insurance, like number one, unless you make 300 grand a year, if we were to make health insurance like universal, you'd probably end up saving money just from having it taxed out and having it a government program. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, if if when it comes to like school, like education, I think everyone should be able to unionize, especially when it comes to bigger corporations, you know, because like those bigger corporations that are profit driven by law. Their job is to extort you, and if you don't have a democr- uh, like a democratization of the workforce being a union and collective bargaining, that corporation has no uh, lever to, con- to, to keep it in its place. And like that's how we built the middle class in the first place back in the 50s and 60s. Like it was through unions. And you could, and there's a clear uh, <clears throat> there's a clear delineation in the times when you look at graphs of income inequality, where you see the second unions were destroyed, like all the laws were destroyed, you see income inequality spike, like within years. And it's like there's a clear correlation between less democracy in the workplace and more income inequality. Yeah, and you can't help but think like there's a concerted effort to do that. Why is it that a teacher, somebody who is slated with the responsibility of training our future generations, is only getting a barely livable wage? Why is that? And why can't we figure out a way to make sure that these positions that are so important don't can't make more money in the state of Florida right now dude we're talking about public housing I don't think we're far off from right out here you know west of the turnpike where they're gonna have to start building public housing for the for the service industry well they're already doing it yeah there's people who are working at our bars our restaurants our resorts all of this stuff who cannot afford to live in the neighborhoods where they work and then so we're just going to house everybody out west and then bust them in like that's the direction we're headed. Yeah. And uh, I mean, for us, we're a small business. There's not a lot of headroom for, you know, uh, to just give people more money. But when we're talking about record breaking profits year after year after year in these large corporations, like there's money there for the working class. Oh, yeah. But I'm, greed is keeping people down. 100%. Right? I mean, if you look at inflation numbers today. Fifty-four percent of the inflation you see today is extra corporate profits, and that is like insane. what? So, like for instance, it was just it was there was a report done for um, congressman or congresswoman. Um, oh my god, I forget her name. I'll, I'll plug it in. But like, she basically had an entire study done, right? And it came to the conclusion that out of all the inflation we see, fifty-four percent of it is directly extra profits for the companies um that are like that essentially control industry right so it's like so for instance if uh you're like the biggest um it starts at the top with like your the people that are like your walmarts everything right they're just spiking pro or spiking uh prices right because softly they're, softly they're so doing no one knows. It, they're doing what they're doing it and testing how far they can go before their their uh their revenue drops so they're like we're gonna increase our prices two percent. Uh, this I thought this they month. roll back prices. <laughs> no. no, dog. No, no, no. no. Wait, that's they're rolling that shit scheme? up and they fucking oh, yeah, yeah, smoking yeah. That's it. That's a marketing scheme. Yes, I know it's shocking. I know it's shocking. <laughs> but regardless, Most of their like em- employees are on a government assistance so as well, yeah, right? You got a nice exactly. ass teeth. Thank you, bro. I paid um, not that much money for them. <laughs> well, exactly. Put in, uh, like cue. Bling. <laughs> there been years? Yeah, I got oh, kicked in the face uh, like 10 years ago and my tooth was cracked in half and I lived with it for a while. And then shout out Dr. Jensen, um, hooked me up with six across the top. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, man. Here's a pretty good tip. Thanks, guys. Yeah, big love. Yeah, Sorry, it. brother. No, no, you yeah, fuck, your, right fuck your teeth, Nick. You know, dude, my teeth have been perfect. No, you yeah. get no <laughs> so. Your teeth look great, too. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, come on. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Walmart is notorious for, they pay their employees just enough to qualify for food stamps and all that. That's and insane. That, like at that point, it's like, you look at the system who's on food stamps. Mm-hmm. It's not the employees on food stamps and they can't get another job without losing food stamps. In which case they'll make less money by getting a second job. Technically, yeah. <laughs> or they can work at Walmart right. and they'll get 29 hours a week and then they can qualify for food stamps. But they're not going to get health insurance or anything like that, right? So it's like then you look at those statistics. Ninety million people are uninsured or underinsured, 
and that's why you have like 50,000 people a year that die before taking out debt. Bro, when you show up in the emergency room and they're like, oh, we're just here to figure out what kind of insurance you have. You're like, I don't have insurance. Your opportunity of living in an emergency just, I think, dropped in half. No, it does. Right? 100%. If they know that you don't have insurance, they're going to be like, well, who's going to pay for this life-saving operation? Yeah, because the hospitals are for profit. Right. So are they going to help you? No, they're going to bandage you up and say, don't worry. We'll be with you in a minute. And then they're going to help the three people that just came in with insurance. Yeah. And then you, they'll get to you eventually because by law they have to. But if you die in the meantime, you're just a cost of business. Oh, and that's the problem. Terrible, that's wild. So so here, let's, th- right? You're king of the world. You're king of America. W- what's the fix for this? What is the trajectory? To Kill get everyone to and start over. Okay. <laughs> you know that people can hear this? And Good. So um, <laughs> with, there's actually, you're actually um, like, there's a small portion of the population that it, that is the goal, right? <clears throat> is that what we just faced with the fucking... A pandemic that was released on the world was like just culling the herd. But if that, what can we do? Is this like, can is can this ever be fixed? Oh yeah, I mean, like look at Europe, right? Europe, the, all those uh, countries are still capitalist. Um, Bro, the only difference is they all they're all social democracies, and because their people are more represented in their congresses and their in their uh, governments, you know they have. Health insurance. They have all these all other have things. Bad teeth. The mother. Yeah, all have they because bro, they got. Covered. They literally got. They got dental on insurance. They got two dentists in fucking Europe. <laughs> Don't fucking go there for that dentist shit. Nah, you were saying those motherfuckers in California that get paid for all that money. Yeah. Make a law. You get paid for as many homeless people you get off the fucking streets. Boom. We'll sign a petition. Boom. You want two hundred thousand? Get two hundred thousand. You'll get a thousand dollars for each homeless person. Right. There won't be homeless people in all fucking California. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. might go to Colorado. They don't give a fuck. Yeah. You gotta fucking start. Start from the bottom. You gotta take money out of politics. That ca- what fucking Citizens United, yeah. Citizens United, and beat the shit out of the fucking politicians, dog. Take the money out. You just gotta take all the money out of things. Like make it un. Like you can't legally buy someone off, and then you'll see everything will just oh. restore <clears throat> to its normal thing. I'll say this: number one, it, like I honestly think number one, obviously make corruption illegal to begin with. Mm-hmm. But number two, I think. In that system, if a politician is corrupt and they're taking money when it's fully illegal, I think that should be like the the gravest of crimes, where it's like they go to jail forever. Yeah. Do you know there's a nobody thing? ever goes if, to if crime not, for these white not, collar crimes? Not, nobody ever goes to jail. No, for in 2008, all those CEOs should have been put in jail for the rest of their lives. They were given bonuses. Oh yeah, because with taxpayer dollars. Do you know in politics, if you get reelected, one term, if you get reelected, like you run and you get reelected, the rest of your life you make that salary. Yeah, for the rest of your life. I mean, the thing is, I understand that as long as you're not corrupt. Like, if you do a good job right, for your people and all that. Right, if you're doing good for but your constituents, wait, what, but so, how often so does that happen? The reasoning I would say, you know, pay politicians a lot, whatever, so it's harder to corrupt them. Yeah. But at the same time, like, again, I think corruption should be, like, illegal to the point where if they do it, it's almost like you're going to get your hand chopped off. I don't care. I'm not saying that's going to be it, but go to jail for the rest of your life because you fucked up. Like but you're, you're, you're betraying the people you're serving. If I'm working at a fucking restaurant and let's say Nick, after your first year, let's just say you made a hundred thousand just to make it easy. Like you made 80,000 first year. You are going to make 80,000 for now on. You think you're worth that big? You might be more lax. You think you're going to do less? I would do less. Oh, just naturally. Yeah. Just naturally, I would do less. So if I know I'm making this shit no matter what for the rest of my life. Yeah, you have no incentive. No ambition. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, are we talking specifically politics? Like, yeah. politicians? Yeah. yeah. Why would they want to fix shit if they're already making that shit for the rest of their life? Well, so the thing is, like, they're going to want to fix things because they want to get reelected, right? But at the if same time. If you get reelected ins- one time, you only yeah. have to get reelected one time. But, right. like, incentivize. Like, if number one, if you take out corruption. Their only goal is going to be to make your life better because that's the point. Yeah. So, like, if they're going to make your life better and, like, within, like, let's say they're senators and something like that and they're in they're in power for 12 years, two mm-hmm. Senate terms, right? <clears throat> and their entire platform is increasing uh, in or increasing income equality and all that. And, and, like, there's a tangible effect of those two Senates that, you know, they, they alleviated poverty 40% in their time. Yeah. Number one, the country is going to be in a much better place. Society isn't going to seem like it's falling apart around us. At that point, because they're incentivized to do the right thing, at that point, give them a couple hundred grand for the rest of their lives, whatever. Because at that point, 
They've now understand the U.S. They've reached the goal. U.S. They've reached yeah. an actual goal. The U.S. So, economy is worth better. trillions of dollars. So, so what it's if like, we made it two hundred grand a year for the rest of their lives? When in the reality, you know, they've created so much opportunity for so many millions of people. Here's the thing that you, we have to keep in mind, though: the pe- the the people that are in these positions are human, right? And yeah. that's why everybody we're so susceptible to. Um, uh, bribery and whatnot, because people are are valuable. If that's I can no, make no, up words totally sometimes, it. right? Humans like okay, Nancy Pelosi, right? She makes two hundred thousand dollars a year, bro. If I made two hundred thousand dollars a year, me and my wife would be fucking chilling, right? She makes two hundred thousand dollars a year, but she's worth like fucking thirty million dollars from like insider trading and all oh, that. Because she's a fucking egg. But, but then look people, at people. The- there's so much greed, right? And and this is why a lot of people had trouble with Trump. And I know he's not like there's. He could have done so many things better. But that whole drain the swamp thing, like he was on to something there, right? Because there's corruption on every level and they're entrenched in there. Mm -hmm. And the only way to get corruption and money out of government is to literally, like you said, (laughs) kill them them all and fucking start over. You know people are going to hear this? Yeah, I know. (laughs) I know. But... It, right? This is the only way this well, is gonna happen. We could have had gotta... that angelic man, Bernie Sanders, just fucking rise and just... bro. They railroaded Bernie Sanders. Oh, yeah. They railroaded Tulsi Gabbard. They don't want somebody in a position of power who's actually gonna create change for for uh, the American people. It's about lining their pockets over and yeah. over and over again. Yeah, I mean, well, you know what you were saying, right? Like the reason Trump got elected was because he touched nerves in the American people that they've felt forever. Yeah. Right, and like. The thing about Trump is he didn't do any of the things he promised. Like he yeah. didn't get, he didn't drain the swamp. He made it worse. You know what I mean? Like uh, under his uh, under his presidency, they actually loosened those corruption standards even more. You know, but it's like, and he put the Supreme Court in place to do it. So it's like, the thing about Trump is, and the worst, like if Trump, even as a Republican, were to say, "I'm going to make sure everyone has health care and I'm going to literally get corruption um, and corruption." I would even vote for him, but at the same, because it's like I don't care what the person looks like, but if they're gonna do the right thing and actually stand for what they're saying, that's one thing. But you know, at the end of the day, he ran as a Republican. I don't care what party you're in. I hate both these parties. But if you're going to make, if you're gonna just add to it and bring in the same exact people in your administration that are causing the problem, like he brought in all the same people that were in George W. Bush's administration and all them. At that point, it's pretty clear you're not going to change anything. But and it that, happens. That's the thing. It happens on both sides. It oh, happens no, no, no. all Obama, the time. Exactly. Same thing. Obama, Bush, same thing. Clinton, Clinton is the reason for the 2008 crisis. Yeah. So it's like, you know, and George W. Bush just took it into it like express mode, right? Like it just it happened even worse than it would have. But Clinton's the underlying reason, and then Reagan's uh the underlying reason for like our politics as a whole today. George H. W. Bush, same thing. Clinton, like all our past presidents have done the same thing it's the same party they're just two different sides of the coin yeah that's what people say like two wings of the same bird you know and listen in sales uh, one of the sales a sales t- trick if you're selling dresses right and you have somebody or hoodies, in, hoodies or hoodies, hoodies, hoodies. Yeah, if you're selling yeah. off the teach shit me, hoodies teach me, right teach me. if if i'm selling your hoodies and somebody walks in i'm gonna say do you like red or do you like black Right. And somebody's going to be like, oh, I actually like black. Boom. Hoodie sold. Right. You give somebody two choices. They have to pick one. Yeah. Right? And that's, I think, all by design. You heard about um, the, who the Pepsi bro- shit. Who are the brothers, though? Um, the Coke brothers. Eric. No, Eric uh, uh, Weinstein. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the wine, the dark. Uh, hor- dark know, horse the, podca- the dark podcast. Inno- the dark intellectual. He Weber. started a Twitter page called Unity 2020, where he was talking about creating a third party where he could unite people in the middle, right? Twitter banned it. Twitter banned it, blocked off Twitter, blocked off Facebook because they do not want a third option that's for the people. All of us, I feel like all of us can agree. The shit's fucked up. Nobody yeah. up at the top is fighting for us. And if they are, if they start off fighting for us, as soon as they get into office, I had a conversation on the podcast with a gentleman about this, that their goal when they get there, like if you go into Congress, before you can make any of your shit happen, you got to go raise money for the party, right? It's like that's, you spend the first two of your years, job. you have to go raise money for the party. Yeah. So it's like once you realize, once you get into office, you're immediately, your focus is money and then everything else is out the fucking window. Oh, yeah. I mean like the political corruption, like the, the political lobbying industry 
is a multi-billion dollar industry. Yeah. You know but what I mean? So it's that, like, and all the people that are lobbying are ex-politicians that get paid millions of dollars a year. But that's the reason why no one wants to have kids. Do you have any kids? No. Do you want kids? I'd love to have kids, but it's scary. You it's know? scary. It's, it would be scary yeah. to bring a child into this world. You would feel like almost irresponsible. Yeah. You know, but the next kid that's born could fucking cure cancer. You know, that's the other side of it too. But what is the world we're going to bring them into? I remember when the pandemic hit, I was thinking about my nephews and my niece yeah. young in school, like how terrifying it must be for my sister, how terrifying it must be for them. Like I couldn't imagine raising a child in this world right now. Exactly, bro. Politicians are the reason I'm pulling out because I'm just like, <laughs> yo, I don't know what All of to your girlfriends do. thank the politicians. Yeah, and I'm just like, boom, and like on the floor. And I'm like, I, I'm stepping in, I kick Close them. one. But yeah, it's just scary. And that's why like eventually, w w what are they going to do when like the United States have like, a full, it's a country of 16 people. Because, like, no one wants to have kids anymore. Well, what we were supposed out. to do was go follow the Georgia Guidestones. But they fucking demolished that. You guys know what the Georgia Guidestones No, tell are? me. Okay, so there's these fucking, like, slate monument built in Georgia of, like, 15-foot tall pieces of granite. Carved the country in Georgia them. or the, uh, state, the state, Georgia? state of Georgia? Okay. State right? of Georgia, right? Um, this guy, under a fake name in the 80s, constructed these things. And it was, like, the new Ten Commandments... Um, written in the eight main languages of the world. The first one was fucking maintain population under 500 million to maintain balance with um, with nature or whatever, right? Dog, we had 8 billion. Yeah, how do you get from 8 billion to 500 million? COVID 2021, baby. Uh, they're trying to call the herd, right? And and but the th I guess the point is is like there are people who have a plan for how it would work if we could get down to 16 people left in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and some people want it that way, but there's not. There's 330 million of us, right? How many of us are willing to fucking contribute to our growth, and how do we get there? Yeah. How do we take people like Nick, who's fucking articulate, dedicated, driven, cares about his fellow person, how do we get him into a position where he can create change for Which us? Nick are you talking about? Canavan? No, Canavan. Not him. Canavan. 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 Yes, he Canavan. No. Oh, but oh, not. Oh, 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 but not with that. You shit, heard it here first. Yes, he can a van. COVID kind of didn't like do anything with population control because we never had eight billion people before now. Yeah, I mean that's one thing I would say. Like, I don't like this is the first time we ever had eight billion. I will people. say this just because like it seems and there's a lot of evidence for it. It you know could have been made in a lab and accidentally released just through negligence. But the thing is, like, it really didn't. If they're going to actually do that, like, I don't think COVID would have been the way to do it. You well, know? COVID for me, and, you know, this is like, I'll take this off, put on a tinfoil hat right now, was a fucking accidental test run, right? So yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. they're doing these fucking very dangerous research, and this is what kind of people are understanding now. This very dangerous research was being done, and because there was all of these, you know, safety standards that weren't being upheld, you know, this shit accidentally gets out. A couple people in Wuhan end up getting sick. It spreads all over the world, and now they see, okay, now if we can make this to be something that kills 10% of the population, mm -hmm. right? One, we see how people are compliant. I also have a very crazy theory, right? Now, hear me out here. What this is going to be. I'm going to go out. down a fucking rabbit hole here. What if... The, the vaccine actually doesn't protect you from COVID. It protects you from the next thing they release. So the only people who survive are the compliant. Everybody else is like, I'm not taking that fucking vaccine. So then they're like, Haha, all right, we got the people who are willing to listen, release that shit. And then the rest of us are like, I'm not, there's not enough testing, gone. Now you've got a fucking, a world of six billion people who are willing to fucking listen. You know, that's sorry. That's a fucking weird rabbit hole. But I think often there's like shit that happens. That, that shit was like, so crazy. Made me forget what I was going to say. Is like, it right? Damn. damn. So like, yeah. I'm like, I got one vaccine, two vaccines, one for me and my wife. It's in the freezer. Whenever that shit comes out, we're like, all right, babe, it's time. But <laughs> <laughs> But you never know, man. And there are people in the world who think there's too many of us and they're very smart and they're very wealthy and they might be working on ways to fucking call the herd, you know? Yeah, I mean, the only, like, and this is just me playing devil's advocate to that. Yeah. The only reason I don't think that would be the case is just because, like, I honestly genuinely think that the people in power are not, not that much smarter. 
That's I, fair. I, I honestly think that, like, if you look at the American government, it's like a geriatric ward in in Congress, right? Like, like, and the executive branch, and the Supreme Court's a little younger, but they're psychotic. So it's like, when you look at like just the government as a whole, and you take that around the world, like, there's so many dumb decisions made by all these governments where I just find them to be like too incompetent to to create that this, shit. this vast. This is true, but thing. this is that we're assuming that the people in power, the senators and the governors and stuff have anything to do with it, right? What we're talking about is a very small group of people who have run all of the decisions in industry and in media and in propaganda for fucking centuries, Ever. right? And we got they aliens might, slinging dick in Egypt. And they might be, <laughs> they might be working with fucking extrater extraterrestrials, right? Um, we don't fucking know, but what we do know is that Information is disseminated to us from a very small group of people, right? It's not by accident that you see these news clips where it shows 200 different local news stations all saying the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. That information is sent out to these news networks, and you either get we're either going to tell you the left side of the story or right side of the story, but it's all coming from the same place. So I'm not saying that the people, the governors and the senators, the people in power in the United States created this thing. Actually, most of them would be like, are you guys out of your fucking mind? It's the small group of a 100 and something billionaires, like you, the Bilderbergs or whatever, yeah. who are like, Fucking, we can make less of these people. We can make them sick. We can make them slow, right? Um, I, I don't know. I have this tendency of thinking, what's the absolute worst case scenario? And then my slightly schizophrenic mind convinces myself that it's real. But also, like, who fucking knows? You know what I mean? Like, that's fair. We, you, you guys know how veal is made, right? If they get the cow, they don't fucking touch it, and they inject the shit in the eyes, and they make the cow, like, live a good life and everything, except when it has to get the shots in the eye for the, you know... The I didn't energy. know the shots in the eye Yeah, because they can't tense up the muscles. You know how many people fucking did nothing during COVID? I feel like they're all just making them into, like, little oh, veal. veal. Yeah, they're literally, like, they're staying at home. They don't have to work. They're getting this bullshit money, and then they're eating, and they're just watching their fucking dick talks, and they're doing all this shit, and they're weakening the people. We, the fucking, the gyms were closed. Me and Nick went running every day. Yeah. Every day. We I owned a gym. The news was telling people the gym was the most dangerous place they can go to. My business was decimated because of it. Decimated. We had the cleanest, we had the cleanest facility around. We had industrial grade air purifiers that like we then sold hundreds of them. I ended up working for that company. We had a machine that fogged the space with disinfectant every night. There's only eight people in the room at once. On this sheet on the news, it said most dangerous place in red. Gym. Safest place. Publix. Publix is three doors down and there's fucking 150 people in there. You know, I think Why do you think? Because it's like Wally. -E. Exactly. Yeah. Remember Wally? -E? Yeah, those fat fucks. Yeah, just floating around or whatever. It's uh, easier to control people when they're not healthy and when they're dumbed down. And So in your theory, if the, only the people that got it, you know, the vaccination, it's like also like that could be, okay, out of those many people, how many people stayed at home and just ate and are easier to control yeah. and they're just on their phone? But like, w me, him, and my other roommate, we had one day where we just, it was like a week where we just chilled out of the whole fucking time. Yeah, and literally. We, we just watched Avatar. The last <laughs> airbender. The last airbender. And then we watched Legend of Korra. And like, the first second she fucking did something, I was like, I hate this bitch. She grew on me, bro. She was kind of cool. But, um, <laughs> yeah, and that was it. We watched Avatar. That was it. Right. And then everything, we we're like, all right, back to work. Right. Like, fuck it. And even like then, we were kind of like working on shit. We were still going on runs. We were still like walking, meditating, and all this shit. But it's just like, bruh, just so many people are easy to just, like, fall in that mindset. Like, yeah. this this person I work with, they're, like, they're complaining they're not making enough money. I'm like, what do you want to do? They're like, I want to sell furniture. I want to get furniture, refurbish it, and sell it. That's what I want to do. That's my angle. I was like, all right, dope. She's like, they're like, I don't even know how to do it. I was like, all right, what you, what you got to do, bro? And this is just me thinking in 10 seconds. I was like, make business cards. Do that shit where you buy people, like, pick up people's groceries and shit. Where she like where they live, they live in a spot where like it's mostly old people. I was like, get their grocery for them, drop it off, give them your business card, and be like, yo, I also sell furniture. Like this is my shit. You could show them and everything. P -p Charge them a um, include the the rental truck fee already in it, and then just tell them free delivery. But the rental truck fee is already included, yep. so they're like, oh shit, people love free shit. I don't care how much money you have. Free shit's dope. So it's just, then they think like that. And I'm like, do that shit, bro. That's just me giving her an example. And they were like, oh, 
but I hate grocery shopping. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what? That's not the fucking point. Like, love making furniture more than you hate grocery shopping. Right. Like, how? But there are so many people who we go back to are comfortable with mediocrity and actually feel better when somebody is telling them what to do. Right. And that's why people like us, it's actually a good thing for people like us because it makes it that much easier for us to to rise to a position, you know, to rise to the top because most people are just going to sit around and eat cheesecake, you know. Um, but I, I, I respect your opinion and your angle so much because Nick has not said like I have and like, well, there's people who want us all dead and it's fuck, we're fucked, we're doomed, you know you see a clear way out of it, you know, and you see that there is a potential for us to really create some real change. And it's not all doom and gloom. And that I respect. And I look to that. And I hope that more people can take inspiration from, from your I perspective. So I do too. So we'll tag team. Oh God, oh um, you know, and I think you, people need to listen to like people like yourself while you're down there. I was about to suck the piss out of you. <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? Like, I, yeah. I, I have fun with the weird, crazy conspiracy theories. To me, it's fun to think about and whatnot. But I think it's so important to be objective and to remember, you know, that there is a way out of this. And we've seen it before, right? You're, yeah. you're so educated on the things that have worked in our past and that there were things that set up that work well. And we just need to find a way to get ourselves back there. Yeah. I mean, you know, I appreciate that. Yeah. And, like, you know, one thing – my thing is, like – because I just I, I pay so close attention to like the news and what's passing and this and that, like I, it's very easy to get depressed. Yeah. And like for a long time, because I politics I've I've always just had an interest in, but like the thing about it is like at first, especially when I was younger, like I was like just straight nihilistic. You know what I mean? Like I was just I didn't I didn't like anything I saw, but I had an interest towards just like history and like you know I, I would love to like be a teacher. Like I would love that but at the same time you know me as a person it's like i can't just sit there and be nihilistic it's just not my personality so it's like you have to always look and like see like what's worked what what can we do collectively and that's where i just think you know like especially americans like in the past like understand like we used to have like militant unions that took over towns and did strikes that shut down companies so bad that they would like literally like go bankrupt and that's what it took to get like a 40 hour work week and to get children out of factories. Yeah, you know I mean? it's this... like I just think Americans need to realize like if you really look at our past, like it's not like we're being like, you know, like weak by saying like we should help everyone. It's like, no, like to get the the benefits we have today, like Social Security, like Americans fought so hard, like Americans died for their for to make the world better for the future generations. And, like, I just think, like, it's never going to be easy. Anything I say is never going to be easy. But if everyone collectively is, like, we're going to make sacrifices for the next generation, we're at a we're at a tipping point where it's, like, you know, like, do you want to just, like, have the world get nuked to shit? Like, do you want to have the world, like, go, like, burn to a crisp because of, like, climate change? Do you want the world to, like, just, like, fail entirely? Do you want to live in this dystopian society? Or do you want to fight to get out of it? Like... Me, I, 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 I want to show at least like I, I don't I don't think I'm like 100 percent right or accurate. I'm only giving like my perspective from what I see and what I believe. But like I just think like, you know, for instance, like with you, you might not uh, like agree with me on everything. But just the fact that from two different perspectives, we can come to an understanding. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think everyone needs to do that and realize like the the whole system is bullshit and it's made it's built to work against you yeah you know what you're saying though is that we in order to get the change like people need to die in the street i had to take the hoodie off and i think um i like how you kept with the brand though oh you got it. well done <laughs> sir um you know you're right it, it, serious change made for race race rights and women's rights and rights of all these different people people took to the streets and people were killed in the streets to get this kind of change and it's like is that what we have to do and you know, then i go to fucking uh the second amendment like you know and you talk about militias like you're saying in order to create change like we have to take to the streets potentially armed to get our government to do for us what they should be doing in the first place yet our government wants to disarm us 
right? And that's what sometimes people, I know this is some crazy turn here, but people are like, you know, people don't need these kind of weapons for hunting. And it's like, it's not always for hunting. It's to protect ourselves against tyranny, right? Isn't that, that's what's written in the Second Amendment. There's yeah. a great um, comedian's line. I wish I could know his name and I don't want to ruin his joke, uh, but I heard it the other day and it was like, it was the second shit thing they wrote. You know, the second thing they wrote was like, you are going to need fucking guns. You know, the first thing what they wrote was like, you can say whatever the fuck you want. But if you want to do that, you're probably going to need guns, you know. And is it terrifying that in order to create some real change for our government to to come and stand up for us, that we potentially have to go to the streets and create bloodshed? Like, But how beneficial do you think that would be? Because how do you think the news would portray it? Well, it depends on what side you're on. So, like, I would say this is my example, right? With the civil rights movement, back when it was happening, it was actually very unpopular. But, and, like, the reason it became mainstream and it went into the conscious and it went, like, viral for that day, so to speak, it was the fact that these peaceful protesters in masses were getting uh, the dogs unleashed on them. Yeah. It was about seeing like the firefighters blasting these peaceful protesters with like water hoses and everything. And what it did was when you saw white and black people working together peacefully and just like getting attacked, getting beaten, some of them died. And like what it did to the psyche of all Americans at that moment, even the people that didn't agree was saying, this isn't right. And, and when you shock the public conscious, all of a sudden, people that wouldn't have been on your side are now thinking a lot deeper about the situation, the circumstance. And that's what I believe is how you really make changes. Even you have to, in my view, you, be you have to be peaceful. But it's peaceful to almost a martyrist extent where it's like in that you can create real, real change because you shock the people that are like, you know, the, the comfortable upper middle class. You shock the people, the 1%. You shock the the people that don't agree with you that are on the other side. When you shock the consciousness to realize this isn't right. And, and when you do that, you make real change. All I'm saying, dog, is uh, this piece is full. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, like, obviously, like, there's Apparently a lot. Apparently not for long, though. There's, like, yeah, it just, there's, it's, it's empty real quick, yeah. you know what you're saying. <laughs> there's a lot of people, though, that, like, have my similar views to me that are on the more revolutionary side that say the only way to achieve these things is through uh, violence. And like, that's the thing. Calm down, like, Aaron Yeager. Yeah. Well, I mean like, so like back in like the twenties, right. You had the, the things that led to the new deal. There were four movements specifically. There was the labor movement, which was largely peaceful. There was one socialist movement, which was largely peaceful. And then you had a small communist movement, and you had a relatively decent sized uh, second socialist movement. And these two movements were actually revolutionary movements. Like they wanted, they, they thought the only way to change things was through means of violence. And then the labor movement and the peaceful larger socialist movement were for um, peaceful, uh, peaceful protest. And, you know, back then, the reason why FDR went as far as he did, because FDR was from a banking family. The reason he went as far as he did is because he felt that if he didn't truly change people's lives and create almost like a social democracy back then, he was worried that the next shoe to drop would be, um, you know, the people rising up with the pitchforks, basically, right? Like mm-hmm. people rising up in a way that would have been violent in his excerpts. And mind you, he put a 90% tax on the largest companies in the U.S. In his excerpts, he said he saved capitalism. He saved democracy. He didn't, he didn't say he saved democracy, but he said he saved the American way of business by implementing these 90% taxes because he had to he had to redistribute wealth in a sense that that was way more impactful to this lowest person. Was FDR after the – I'm so ignorant. Um, he the, was the president that led us out, out of, of the Great the Depression, Depression. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. through World War II. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you what, how – how terrified they are, are of true peaceful protests. You guys know what agent provocateurs are? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They're fucking people who are put into a peaceful protest to cause chaos, to disrupt a, a legitimate cause. Yeah. And I think we saw that in huge numbers this um, 
uh, the 2020 George Floyd protests. Oh, you know, yeah, most no. of those people who were out there, and that's what uh, somebody said, like mostly good people or whatever. I think Trump may have said it. It's like there's people who are put out there. Like I saw a video of a guy in all black like bashing out an auto zone window and like all these black people are around are like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, we're not fucking breaking shit and come to find out the guy's like a fucking uh, a, fed. a fed, you know, yeah. the, the charge into the Capitol building. There were multiple people. This one guy on camera who was like um, saying, we got to go inside. We got to go inside. Yeah. And he ends up being yeah. a fed. He was part of the, fed. you know, and then the people who, who created so much change for us, um, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. And, you know, they were fine when they were talking about empowering black people. It was when they started to bring white people and black people together. Yeah, and they started talking about economics. Their fucking lives were taken, oh, yeah. you know? Well, I mean, like, for instance, here's like a more, uh, this very recent member. So uh, in Michigan, there was a plot to assassinate the Michigan governor. Yep. There were about, there was like, I could, I'm going to be wrong about the numbers for by a few, but there were, let's say, 15 people. Yeah, like 70% of them were feds. Eight or nine of them were FBI agents that created the situation, inflamed these people to become radicalized, and then busted them. Right. So they so can they, be like, so they, look what we prevented, and, and, but created. And this is public record. Yeah. It was released. Like, in the court filings, like, there, most of the group were FBI agents that radicalized these people. And then busted them. And the same thing happened with the war on terror. You had uh, multiple situations where, for instance, there was this one kid in New York, right? He was mu he was Muslim. He uh, he was um, he was like uh, like autistic, like a little like neurodivergent. And they took this kid who was very easy to like manipulate, and they manipulated him to want to, and not even want because he tried not to do it, but they kept pushing him and pushing him. But they were like, you need to like, you know, do this, you know, bomb a train or something like that in the New York subway. And he was pushing not to do it, not to do it, not to do it. And then the final day he was he was supposed to do it and they busted him and put him in jail for like the rest of his life. The final day he was like, I need to ask my mom. I can't do this. Right. And they busted him. Yeah. But it's like they how many created, mass school shootings they do you created think the happen because of that. Uh, how many of these people that you see that are like highly medicated, they're often either killed before they can say anything or they're like fucking, you know, I'm a patsy. I'm a patsy. Like we have more mass school shootings in this country and than anywhere in the world. And it yeah. also has increased exponentially over the past, what, 20 years. Right. And we hear about these stories time and time again of the FBI or whatever, convincing people to do terrible shit like, uh, Who's not to say that that's like, so like there's there's internet forums, like that a lot of these people have been in actually. So like, they're they're either like, a lot of the the school shooters are very on the internet, and they get down these rabbit holes, right? And like these rabbit holes, like there's a legitimate like pipeline into these forums, and the forums once you hit like the deepest part of this these rabbit holes you get into these forums where basically like these groups are like pushing people to do it yeah like it, it's like it's pretty wild do we think those are potentially controlled by so a lot of them very are like smart people well uh, the thing about it is and like the reason i don't think so is because a lot of them are like the 4chan groups from back in the day yeah yeah and it's like people that have been wildly on the internet for years and years and years and they're just like instigators and like they bust a lot of the people on these forums and they're not anything like that they're literally just looking to sow chaos yeah so chaos and so they, say they it's corrupt not corrupt kids say it's not our government doing it but say it's like other governments that are trying to eat us alive from the inside through our our social media like there's a statistic that 18 of the top 20 christian fundamentalist groups on facebook are actually controlled by russian propaganda meme farms yeah that right? actually is that if i'm not mistaken that actually was proven correct oh yeah and what they'll do is they'll take a uh like a texas separatist group and like a fundamentalist um um uh, like an evangelical group or, or something. no like uh the other side of like if you're muslim or a muslim group in texas and they'll fucking plan rallies the same day across the street from each other right and you look at the people who actually run these facebook groups and they're fucking russians you know, and it's like we're being eaten alive by the inside. You know, I think the same thing's happening with TikTok. Like, so China controls the TikTok algorithm. Yeah. Right. And if if you're a Chinese kid in China, the shit you see on TikTok is like athletic achievements, science and math achievements. Not only that, TikTok turns off at 10 p.m. for kids in China. 
In the United States, our kids see Tide Pod challenges, set yourself on fire challenges. You know, it's like we are being eaten alive by the uh, on the inside through external forces. I think it's important to remember that when you're scrolling your Facebook feed and you're seeing shit that confirms your biases, like this could be being fed to me by somebody who wants me to hate my neighbor, you know, and it doesn't necessarily have to be our, like, you know, I would be like, oh, it's our government. It, it's probably other governments that want us to right. hate each other. It's Dog, totally but I, it's 2022. I feel like if you still have a Facebook, you're fucking insane. Why? I have a Facebook. I'm never on it, though. Yeah. Delete that That's shit. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, it's, business, it's but... sad, right? The Facebook is not sad, but I remember when Facebook started. It was, like, awesome because you got to, like, link up with friends you went to high school with and whatnot. And now it's fucking, it's used against us, you yeah. know? Yeah, no, I mean, that's that's pretty much all. Of, like, a lot of, especially Facebook, it's, like, pretty much that's all it is. You yeah. know, it's just people, like, either posting family pictures or, like, Bitching about politics or something like that. Throwing a grenade in the room and then stepping back and watching yeah. people, you and know. And be like, yo, what fight. happened? Yeah. Yeah. Is, which is fun sometimes. <laughs> it is. That's like fair. a little post and ghost. Mm -hmm. um, so th is there a way out? I, so I often go back to like local elections, right? Because we're not going to drain the swamp, us three, right? But if we find somebody like Nick or somebody in our neighborhood who's willing to do that job, which they're... <laughs> It's uh, there's not many people who are willing to do it. And most of them are not like fucking mentally sane. Right. So people like Nick, like we need to put people like Nick in positions of power to create change in our communities and start there. Oh, hola, gato. Right. <laughs> I think that's the real way out of this. Yeah, that and, uh, you know, uh, make sure that you're not just putting people in there that can stay in there forever. I, I don't think anyone should be in positions of power. Term limits. Yeah. Right? Yes. 100%. Term limits. I had a long conversation with a guy on the podcast about term limits, and you don't realize how long these fucking people are in power. You know, it's like, get the fuck out of there. Let somebody else come in and make some shit happen. Yeah. I you mean, know? that's literally it. You know, at the end of the day, that's that. If, if you don't do that, you're never going to get fresh blood in there with new ideas. Yeah. And the other thing is, too, is, like, do stuff like this, right? Like, create, like, a small podcast. Like, you can get a few microphones, fucking iPhone, and you can sit down and discuss ideas with people and share that. Like, What was that shit that FDR did when he was like, yo, American citizens, I'm going to teach you some shit once a week? Oh, fireside chats. Yeah. Yeah, no, he actually did, like, a weekly broadcast that was just about teaching people how the government worked. And that's that's literally what he re-educated the population. So that's like like kind of what you you're working on, and what we're working on is like not only educating myself. That's why I, I had a couple people on running for U.S. Senate and running for Congress because I realized I'm fucking ignorant as fuck when it comes to like who's running for office. Let me talk to some of these people, and what I learned was like the people running for office are like a phone call away, and a lot of these people will like come and sit down and chat with you. So like reach out, te learn about who's running. But then you have to go vote and you have to vote. You got to educate yourself. Yeah. I don't think anybody's spending any time educating people on who's running, you know? Oh, yeah. It's like, you know, you're going to vote D or R and then all the people that don't have those next to their names, they kind of just like, you know. You like vote the ticket, choices. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Um, but, yeah, no, I mean, it, the local elections are extremely important because that they're going to be the ones that impact your lives the most noticeably at first. Yeah. Like the federal government will come in and like do a massive law that'll just impact everyone like social security. But local elections are like, you know, like, do you think we should put this much more money into like public housing for teachers? And like, that was something on, on the ballot recently, you know, like things like that are super important. Um, but it's like, nobody's going to do it for us. We have to go out and fucking do it. You yeah. Know? And I talk all this shit, but it's like, it became voting day and I was like fucking busy. You know, so it's like you got we got to hold ourselves accountable to fucking do the work, learn who's running, fucking encourage your friends who are fucking. You didn't do early voting. I, I do. They do late voting. Is that a thing? No, I think it is. In some, <laughs> I think it is. In some you have states. to hand give the ballot, though. I think in yeah, some yeah. states they count vote for votes for weeks after the election for whatever reason that is. <laughs> they just have no, they'll, the way they do is they cut it off at seven o'clock. But because they don't have a system in place that like in Florida, like they have Florida. Don't we count our votes the same day? Well, we count the votes when early voting's happening. They'll count them as it goes and keeps the tally. Imagine that. And then it puts it in right. at the, on the day. But there's states, specifically states that, like, you know, they gerrymander. I mean, Florida gerrymanders. But, like, they'll gerrymander. They do, like, voting ID laws and things like that, which limits voting. 
Um, and then they'll limit when the votes get counted. Does an ID limit voting? Does it? Um, yeah, because if you're an American citizen, you should just be able to vote. But so don't like, you need make an it, ID? Make... Like, isn't it like it? You, you like if I get pulled over and I'm walking down the street and I don't have identification, can I get a ticket for that? Isn't that? Don't you have to have oh, yeah. ID to so live like, here? If you're being detained. Yeah. So like what? So like voter ID laws specifically, it creates a barrier to entry for like for instance like, let's say, you know, let's say you yeah, lose your license, you don't have like a public identification card or whatever else. You're just like. No, I have a person. story about that shit. So like, bro. You know your voter ID has to match up with your regular ID to be valid, correct? Wait, um, it's two different things? We don't... Yeah. Yeah. It's two well, different now things. Now, in Florida, now you can just use your license. But, I know, but, but before they then, have yeah, to match up. they have to match up. This fucking, fe- bro, this evil bitch looked at me, <laughs> and then she was like, she saw my name. So my middle name, bro, is G-I-A-C-H-I-N-O. And then she's like, what is that? I was like, it's beautiful. And she put, f- like, Granchano. I said, what the fuck is that? I said, yo, lady, fix that. Like, I was like, that's not my middle name. It has to match up. And I was like, that's like big. Like, my middle name is Jacquino. I was like, I'm not Granchano. Like, uh, what is that? Like, some fucking uh, Big Bird's friend? Is that like, a, no. that's Italian? That, no, dog. Like, I don't Your know what the name, fuck she was Italian? putting. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what the fuck she was putting. <laughs> and then I was like, yo, like, stop. Like, d- fix it. She said, no. I said, what do you mean, no? She goes, like you have to call someone to fix it. I was like, you're right here, fix it. She said, don't do it. So I was like, all right, whatever. I call the fucking place the next day. I'm like, hey, guys, I need this shit fixed. Like, blah blah blah. First lady said, no, it doesn't have to get fixed. I'm like, what? Hung up, whatever. Call back next day. New lady, no, it doesn't have to be get get fixed. I'm like, huh? I call back a week later, but now I'm clicking like I click two para español, a primo dos. So I call him up. And then they were like, I was like, yo, I don't need no Spanish like translator right now. But I was like, listen, my voter card has to match my ID, like, ID right? They're like, duh. I'm like, this evil woman put Granchano. My name's not Granchano. And I was like, we got to get it fixed. These fucking evil bitches here aren't fixing anything. They're like, <laughs> we got you. Don't worry. I came there. They're like, you have to come in. I came in there. I looked at the guy. He was like the main guy. He goes, sir, how may I help you? So nice. And I was like. Bro, fire your staff. And then <laughs> they wound up fixing it. And it was just like, I had to go through all that because one woman didn't want. Like, yeah, that goes back want... to humans being fall- fallible. You know what I mean? It's like we have just regular humans in these positions. A lot of them who hate their fucking life, hate the fucking job that they're doing. She should have got and... pistol whipped. Yeah. Whoa. No, I'm kidding. No, no. no, 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 no <laughs> okay, some no, people no, should no, have no. their guns taken away. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. The piece is full, dog. <laughs> No, yeah. she's been going pistol. That was just mean, bro. I had to go to like you seven steps. Two thousand mules. No, I know what it is. I think by just by saying that, people are like, "Oh yeah, you're one of those." Well, What's I watched that? this documentary about like basically like ballot stuffing or whatever, where they were able to triangulate. They use cell phone data to triangulate people who were going to like twenty different ballot drop offs in one night with like bundles of votes. And they were, it, it just looked like there was some fucking, so with that, some nonsense afoot, you with, know? With that documentary specifically, that was proven false. Really? Yeah. Was that for that Trump By shit? Snopes? Yeah. What is it? By Snopes? Yeah. No, I, it, no, I well, we, so Snopes. Like, so like, they, that, that documentary caused all these lawsuits and the lawsuits went through, like, that's what had all these votes get recounted a hundred times. And there was no inconsistencies. Like, in fact, like in Arizona specifically, when they were doing the lawsuits, there was countless lawsuits in Arizona, I think it was. They counted all the votes and they found only like two votes in particular that shouldn't have been there. And there were like 18 more votes that they didn't count for the other party. Yeah, I think that maybe it was less about that it was fake votes that were going in yeah. the box. No, it was but just that a people very... were being paid to make sure other people's votes made it to the ballot box, right? So it was like people who would normally not even have voted a certain way, they were collecting all these votes and then paying people, mule, these mules, to go out and make sure that those votes got in the boxes. Yeah, so... Something, I think, like that. Yeah, no, no, no. So, like, with that documentary specifically, it was made specifically to um bolster like the stop the steal movement right but the thing is like a lot of the lawsuits that happen a lot of the judges 
that ruled um, in favor of the election being fair were all Trump appointed judges. Right. And then and, and William Barr, who again was a Trump AG. Yeah, I remember. Um, he even verified that they were all correct. And uh, you know what gerrymandering is, right? I've heard the phrase. Okay, gerrymandering is like a hundred times like worse than that shit, and it's legal. So basically, what it does is, and it normally happens when a Republican gets into office, they split. It, it happens in New York, just to like keep the record fair. Like it does happen, but the Republicans are doing it way more at the moment. Well, it happens in Florida too. Mm -hmm. So what they do is like, so let's say like this neighborhood is democratic. Let's say this neighborhood is like a square and it's like split into four. Yeah. So we're all democratic. What they'll do to not make our votes count as much as the square in the upper right has to vote there where it's mostly Republican. The square on the lower left has to vote in a place where it's mostly Republican. And the square on like the other like bottom right has to vote in another place which is mostly Republican. So instead of us voting like 10 to 15 minutes by our house, now we have to travel like 35, 45 minutes. And we're voting in a place that is like prominently the opposite party so our votes gonna count less so then you have one square out of four that are voting five ten minutes from their house and their votes are just divided so it's a way to like keep power yeah. you understand it's not yeah. even it's not even like that clean like let's say you have a nice square district zip code they'll literally draw like lines that like you know like they're gonna cut this one street out and then go through so this one street is one district this street right next door that should be part of the district they cut it out of and put it in this other district and they'll literally like like they'll create these districts that like it'll be like weird like scribbles it looks like scribbles on a map but what they're doing is they're cutting out and siphoning out the votes from the opposite party in charge right so like the 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 party in charge will actively like cut out all these districts and divide all these districts up that should be like let's say it's a democratic district in a republican state they'll take this district and cut it out because they know the majority of the population in a state is going to be in the urban district. So let's say 2 million people live here and 2 million people live in all the outskirts. Yeah. They'll take the one 2 million district that's going to, you know, call the election basically and cut it into a hundred different pieces. This way they make sure that each district goes red because they're outweighing it with the populations of the outside groups. Where's the fucking video on that? Yeah, but the the thing is, is that what we're saying here is that our elections are so subject to nonsense. Yeah. So like, our right, the way it's set up and whoever's drawing these lines or whatever, like, so when I go to my banking app on my phone, I have to use my thumbprint to get into it, mm -hmm. right? And I know shit can be hacked and whatnot, but isn't there a way to fucking just like make it so you can vote on your phone with either facial ID, thumbprint ID, everybody's vote comes directly from them, and then we can make it, and then we don't have, what's the other, the electoral college, that makes shit all weird, right? It's like, I think that the, we need a, re, a, a overhaul in they the way that we're voting. They so, won't I mean, do that because that other takes away- do that. Yeah, but they won't do that because then you can't do gerrymandering with that shit. Yeah, right. So, I that mean, takes I, away if that if that were to happen, the states would be a lot less red, dog. Oh yeah, and well, I, I, mean, I like, think the people the in power don't want to be, be a lot different. Yeah, in general, like I mean, I'm a big believer. Like I said earlier, if you're an American citizen, you you just vote. Like it doesn't matter. Like I think you should have a voter holiday the day of election. I think you should have a month of early voting. Everyone votes. Like, I don't care. Everyone votes. I I would even go as far as saying you should have a tax incentive to vote. Yeah, almost like and required like, to vote because oh, of yeah. all the people who died for the right to be able to do it. Like, exactly. you should be fucking required. So, like, if I was required to do it, not even a tax incentive, like a tax fucking, um, like a penalty, yeah. right? Because we should be held accountable to do this, you oh, know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I look at it like, if you live in our country, I'm not saying you have to, li you have to like, you know, like, be part of every community thing and this and that. But the bare minimum is voting. Like, I think everyone should have to vote. Yeah, like, I, I couldn't like, agree more. I think there should be a way to, to make sure everyone's educated on the candidates. And that usually, usually looks like everyone literally gets blanketed with all the candidates' uh, platforms, all the details on it, what it could do, and, like, all done by official groups that can break down all the details into the statistics, how it's going to help. And then blanket everyone out with everyone, everything that's happening, all the platforms. Do that months prior. And then when election comes, everyone knows what's going on. Everyone's on the same page. And then at that point, 
you're going to number one be educated on what's happening number two voting should be so accessible it's stupid yeah mm -hmm. like there should be a voting booth on every corner well didn't this happen in georgia remember that lady was running and she was fucking crushing this guy and he made it so that there was a bunch of um people with like haitian names and like they'd have like accents over like the e and everything and he basically was like yo if you have that accent yeah. over your name you can't vote no he's like, he basically if it wasn't actually correct in the computer yeah you can't it, vote but then the like secret to do to you. yeah yeah but then the secret of that when you're typing someone's name on a keyboard um into the computer into the system do you see an accent on there no nah. so most of the people don't know how to put the accent over the over the eye let's say yeah right? yeah yeah so I still can't so, figure out how to fucking do yeah that. exactly because our keyboards in america are made with just plain english yeah mm -hmm. but we're also a multicultural society they they basically said if if you have if your name's even incorrect by that little bit, it's done. Even if it's clearly you, you, you can prove it. Thumbprint, yeah. face ID, everything, everything is correct. If it's off by that much, you're 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 not allowed to vote. Right. Which it seems like that would eliminate a specific portion of the population oh, yeah. who is <clears throat> most likely gonna vote a certain way. So like yeah. in that in that election, right? Most of like in, in Georgia, it's like uh, it's, what eighty ninety percent of of people of like the ethnicities that have different accents to their names, they're gonna vote Democratic. So but why is that? And the governor. Why do we just assume that? So because that that the polls showed it. Like in, in yeah. past elections, it, it was clear that was ha happening. So the governor was also the attorney, the running the the candidate governor was also the. Uh, attorney general in charge of the election at the time so he changed the rule himself to benefit his own campaign yeah and that was the scandal well one of the things that like i was surprised about and it's probably because of my ignorance because we talk about like a portion of the population they're probably going to vote a specific way i imagine that immigrants or people like of latin descent would be like definitely democratic right there it, it just seemed to line up for me but then i learned that there's a large portion of the population who are like cuban american or whatever mm -hmm. who are yeah. staunch republicans mm -hmm. because they came from communism yeah and they are like they want to vote Repu they vote republican no matter what because their fear is that if you start going too far left they'll end up where they were before so i think another important point is that just because somebody is um you know, of different ethnicity or different background that they may not vote one way or the other. But it goes back to your point of the importance of everybody being able to vote and not only that, but being required to vote. Yeah. Right. And, and then, and then and that would eliminate all of this. Yeah. One hundred percent. And then like when it comes to like, um, you know, number one, like if we didn't have like some insane culture war at any moment where it's like one party's like trying to limit gay rights and trying to like mm. uh, like require like a higher barrier for entry for black people to vote and things like that if we just got rid of all the culture war stuff and basically said look everyone is equal everyone is we're equal pay everything if we just passed uh essentially like an additional bill of rights that ensures the rights of every single person that has a beating heart and they're americans you have these rights and we just get that out of the way you would find that like there's a lot of black people that are conservative. There's a lot of Latin people that are very liberal. There's a lot right. of uh, you know like uh, whatever it is. You see what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, everyone could just vote with what they believe, and then when you give them the knowledge of what all these policies are going to do for them in their daily lives, and they can vote specifically on the candidates that have platforms that make them feel good, it, politics would change because that now we're voting on ideas. Right. As opposed to like, if I don't vote Democrat, I might not be able to get an abortion, or right. I'm not. I might not, you know, as a gay person, might be able to marry someone yeah. that I love, yeah, because they have a problem with it. Well, you know I think I mean? that's one of the issues is that they always divide us with these fucking like um, social issues. You know, they pull on our heartstrings and get us fighting with each other. And then we're going back to like, if we're voting red or blue, we're still voting against our neighbor. Who, if I think if you said if we were voting on ideas, we would all see that most of us really want the same shit. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Well, I mean, like, for instance, in Florida, right? Florida is a red state at this point by a little bit. But at the same time, in the 2016 election, Floridians voted Trump in. And at the same time, 
voted for a $15 minimum wage and to allow felon American citizens to vote. Right, because And those are don't two wanna... extremely progressive policies. Yeah, because people, we all yeah. want the same shit, yeah. right? But the media is telling us that we don't. It's like the news is telling us to hate your neighbor. Your neighbor believes different things than you. Then don't you know? watch the fucking news. Thank you. Boom. That should be... Shut that shit up. That should be... Watch the Beta Boys podcast. That would be a good t-shirt line. Where did I just see that somewhere? Don't watch the news. I don't know. But it's a great fucking... Like, my poor mother, she's, like, glued to the news. And she's always thinking the world's fucking ending. And she always is Steal afraid of TV. this or that. It's like, Mom, we don't watch the news. And we're much happier. You oh, know? Yeah. But then how do you stay informed? And it, you just said it very well. Watch the Beta Boys podcast. Watch That's Live it. from Hakuna. Watch... There are so many different oh, yeah. podcasts online. I mean, like, online if you want just you can... a variety of opinions, and you mentioned this, Breaking Points. Yo, Breaking Points is fantastic. Sagar yeah. and Crystal Ball. Um, they are two different... Uh, they're two different parties. They're both pretty close to the center, I think. And um, they... They voice both sides of the story in such an objective way that it's really good to get, like, you know, um, unbiased news. So Breaking Points is a great suggestion, you know. Um, yeah. And what I suggest is watch the stuff you agree with, but then also go watch some of the stuff you don't agree with. And watch it with an open mind because there are people whose opinions you've been told to think are wrong you might actually agree with, you know, you just can't watch it with the, the idea of being cynical or making fun or whatever. Like try to say, let me see what this person yeah. is saying. Or at know? a minimum, it'll at least, you might not agree with any of what they're saying, but it'll at least like humanize them to the point where it's like, that's mm. not an enemy. They're just like, in my opinion, an idiot or whatever else. Like right. at least you look at them like a person and you don't hate them anymore. Yeah. Cause that hatred is a poison. Another thing to remember is a lot of the things you're hearing people say, are just like because they're repeating what they have been told by like their side, you know? It's oh, like hundred percent, yeah. right? It's not like uh, it, we all have these narratives that we're following, and really, if we sit down and go back and forth, and we're like, wait a minute, actually, the narrative is not that extreme, and yours isn't that extreme. We both want a fucking safe place to raise our family, and we want opportunity, and we feel like um, you know our voice should matter, and um, you know, it's not that. I think that gay people shouldn't be married. I think anybody should be able to marry whoever they want. But if I mention that Trump was could have created some change for us, people immediately put me in a group of, oh, he thinks that gay people shouldn't be married. And that's not the case at all. There's a great meme that says, I want my gay friends to protect their marijuana fields with AK-47s. You know what I mean? It's like, I th again, I guess I'm going back to, we all want the same thing, you know? But I think there's people who want us to be divided. Goddamn liberals! <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it, well, you know, that being said, I I appreciate you guys sitting down and chatting with me today. And what, what you guys are doing here is fucking dope. Um, and I I feel like I, I learned a lot. And um, I feel like I also have a lot more to learn. Like when you start talking about gerrymandering, this is something I know nothing about. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, I think that all of us probably have a lot to learn. Um, not you guys, but just in general, you no, know. No, nah, we mean? still do. Everyone I feel like does. I'm maxed out, Everyone but we still does. do. Yeah. No, no, no. There's, there's, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. You know, like, yeah. like w life is just a learning process, and then you die. Like you, you, if you stop learning, you're, you're done. But you're do dead. You, but do you really die, or do you just go on to the next portion of the simulation? Find out tonight. <laughs> 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 it's classic dude there's so many things we didn't get to touch on dude like we didn't even touch simulation Hancock, theory oh, fucking shit. We gotta have you ancient on apocalypse again. have you watched that yet ancient apocalypse with no. dude, it's, a, it's graham hancock theory the ancient civilization dude. i Netflix. love that man oh it's fucking oh, fantastic i've been glued to it for the last four days um my wife is like what are you watching i'm like dude they're talking about a very advanced civilization that fucking lived far before all like of 11, us like 11 12 thousand years yeah, ago and then taught hunter gatherers on how to build these structures and she's like wow that sounds pretty fucking dope i'm like yeah well, dude, fucking watch it's fucking good ancient oh apocalypse super dope we you get so like you got to come on again because like that was that was the original purpose of <laughs> of coming on here but like we could have had that convo <laughs> dude that was the point Fuck. like we got onto the tangent but, but it's like, good right because yeah, yeah. it's uh, this is a great thing about doing unfettered conversations like this because it's just like a natural progression of ideas you know oh, yeah but there's so many other cool things that like dude i would love to come back 
ASAP, you know? Done. So we'll have part two of this then. Hell yeah. yeah. Cool. And we're going to strictly stay on ancient civilizations and simulation and everything else. Same. We'll do that. And then I would love for you to come on live from Hakuna. Let's do talk it. Talk about your music. Hell talk yeah. about your clothing line. Um, talk about your fucking radical, awesome, radical as in dope ass ideas. Um, I'd love to have you on for that too. Let's do it, dog. Cool. All right, perfect. Nick, you're Thanks fucking for coming real, on. dude. Listen, if you see Nick, yes, he can a van in a fucking voting booth <laughs> near you. This dude can create some real change for us. And, um, dude, just keep pushing what you're pushing. Uh, I know it's probably, I think I push on you more, like, fucking do politics, do politics. But um, I think you, you know, people like you and people like you can really create some real Stop change. Stop being for a us. bitch. No, oh, it's scary, dude. Who That's, doesn't want to get fucking you know, Clinton? True, true. <laughs> well, who knows? Who knows? Maybe that's a long list. A couple years, you might see me. But, yeah. <laughs> but um, no. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Check out Hakuna Makaba. Yeah. It's fantastic. And yeah, Beta thank Boys out. Beta thank Boys. Are Beta fucking Boys real out, dog. deal. Check them out. We'll see you soon. Thanks, y'all. Boom. And politicians are the reason I pull out. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. We out.